Hey how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we are gonna see, what if Naruto take advantage of Kurenai and Kami in bedroom alone. This is part 2, and before getting into video. I request you to check the author of this fanfic, and show some love and support. Name of the story is. The Ice Fox of Konoha by Cube Goku, do check it out. All details in description. And if you want next part of this series. Please leave a like share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. Also check out Petron for uncensored spicy content, link in description. With teammate. Anko and her three genin were currently walking through the forest at a small pace towards the port. It was still a few hours away, and they wanted to get there before nightfall if they could help it, the trip was relatively quiet for everyone. Naruto was holding a scroll in his hands as they walked together making other turn to him. Um and Naruto-kun what are you reading? Hinata asked, and the blonde genin grinned as he held down the scroll. This is one of my Kachan scrolls. She gave it to me to memorize so figured I'd read this while we walk, Naruto said, and Hinata nodded while Shikamaru rubbed his head with a small sigh. You couldn't get me to do Jinjutsu. It's too troublesome. Though I wonder if I should be surprised that you can. You seemed more like the type that would go for the ninjutsu and tijutsu aspects, Shikamaru told him, and Naruto nodded with him. Well Kachan really drilled into me the aspects of jinjutsu and the like. Also I've always wanted to learn her techniques so I just did it. Ankoni told me that it's a good idea to be all-rounded and not stick to one particular style, Naruto said in response and Anko grinned as she wrapped her arm around Naruto's neck. That's right I did. I'd do it all again, Anko said making the group chuckle like mad before the fell into silence again. Um Anko sensei does the place we're going to have shinobi? Hinata asked and Anko nodded while a small grin as she explained. That's right little Hina-chan. It sure does. It's not one of the five great nations which hold the most shinobi and political power in the world, but it's considered a country with military power. The odds of us meeting shinobi is rather a gamble, but bandits and the other stuff is almost a certainty. Now then let's get moving team Anko or we'll keep our guides waiting, Anko said, and everyone increased their pace towards the docks. A bit later. Anko and her team made it to the docks in about three hours and looked around. They saw plenty of sailors carrying supplies onto boats, and they quickly looked around. Alright the scroll says that the ship is around this general area, Anko said, and everyone nodded as they watched people work. Soon there was man who came up to them and got their immediate attention. Hey are you the group of Kanoha Shinobi? The sailor asked in a gruff voice. Everyone of teammate nodded as the sailor sighed in relief. Finally we're about to ship off to Numa no Kuni, and we thought you wouldn't make it. Please we should hurry before they cast off, he said as everyone followed him to the ship. It wasn't a very big ship. More or less it was a merchant ship deal for fast travel. A little durable, but not the same quality as others. Naruto and his teammates got on the boat quickly, then watched as Anko talked with the captain about some things. She handed him some papers before walking over to them. Alright we are to guard this ship from any bandits or pirates that happen to try and sink us. Don't worry as we'll plan in case they do get here. A lot of people want to get their hands on this scroll, so make sure we get this done right. Now in the meantime I'll be teaching you all a little trick of mine, Anko told them which made everyone gulp for a little bit. So what are we doing? Shikamaru asked and Anko took out a small smoke bomb. Everyone raised their eyebrow as she stood to her feet. She walked a few ways to the edge of the ship and smiled. This is one of my specially made smoke bobs that will explode on impact. Use your chakra to layer your hands keeping the bomb from exploding. It's my own personal chakra exercise, Anko said as she threw the ball to Naruto. The blonde gulped and quickly layered his hands with chakra as he caught the blonde. On instinct Naruto held it for a second to make sure it wouldn't explode inside. He threw the ball to Hinata, and the Hayuga caught it, or rather fumbled with it for a little while before handing it to Shikamaru. The Nara simply caught it and threw it back to Anko, and the same process went on throughout the ship. Back in Kanoha. Saratobi had quickly arranged a council meeting after he had received the letter from Kumo. It was quite a major thing that was happening, and everyone was gathered around in little to no time at all. Saratobi sighed as he sat in his seat while everyone looked confused as to the reason for the presences. Okage-sama what's the problem? Shikaku asked as Saratobi looked to be in a daze while he was thinking over his words. Everyone started to mutter to themselves over what could possibly be the problem. Saratobi looked up and reached into his clothes. Early today I received a note from Kumo. It's about the arrangement of a political marriage, Saratobi said making everyone gasp. Some unconsciously turned to the Hayuga head, Hiashi, and saw he still had his apathetic face and usual. A political marriage? But isn't that a little out of the blue? Tsu masked and everyone seemed to agree with her while Shikaku stood to his feet. Okage-sama may I see that note? The Nara head asked and Saratobi handed the note to him. Shikaku looked it over and narrowed his eyes as he read the note out loud. 
The Kanoha has Hokage. Gumo has recently discussed the prospects of the deal that we had made with Kanoha many years ago. We have recognized our mistake in asking for compensation for the kill of one of our jonin and realized that we were at fault for trying to disregard the treaty. An offer of not creating war in the future, we'd like to set up a treaty now in the form of a political marriage of our best genin student with yours. Respond as soon as possible so we may go over the terms of agreement. Gumo's Rakage. Shikaku finished and everyone narrowed their eyes especially Hiashi. Who's our top genin? Someone asked and Siratobi slightly grinned. He held up the list of the most recent graduates of academy students. Well based on academy stats then that's Naruto Yuhi Uzumaki, Suratobi said, and some people scowled at the name which wasn't missed on the old Hokage as he sighed, but there was nothing they could do about it at all. So are we going to accept this? Inoichi asked and Suratobi rubbed the back of his head before calmly taking off his hat. He, in truth, wasn't sure how to feel about this. Here was Kumo trying to make amends for what they did, but a political marriage. I think we should take it. Kumo is the only country that rivals us in military power. I think for the sake of avoiding war then we should do it, Shikaku said, and some people agreed with him. So we should go with it then. Well alright, but it's majority vote. How many say no? Saratobi asked Saratobi asked, and the civilian council raised their hands. Granted this wasn't about the treaty, but Naruto actually being able to marry someone. And those who say yes? Saratobi asked and the shinobi side raised their hands except Hiashi. Everyone glanced at the Hayuga head and Saratobi side. He rubbed the bridge of his nose before addressing the stern-looking Hokage. The Ashi sand without you the vote is tied. What do you say? Saratobi asked and Hiashi took the time to glance at everyone. All eyes were on him as the Hayuga side. For the longest time and even though I can't say that I completely forgive Kumo for what they made us do. I lost my brother to them and I don't think I'm ready to fully accept them, Hiashi said, and most of the civilian council smiled while the shinobi side sighed. But I know when to try and forgive something. At least they are trying to make amends I guess. I agree with it, Hiashi said, and the shinobi side smiled with a nod while Saratobi furled up the scroll. Alright then. I'll send a reply immediately, Saratobi said as he got up from his seat and left the room while Shikaku turned to Hiashi. I seriously thought you were going to say no to that one, Shikaku told him, and Hiashi closed his eyes while getting up from his seat. Personal feelings shouldn't rise above the need for the village to grow stronger. I simply acted on that belief, Hiashi said as he left the room. Tsum and the others got up also, and the Inuzuka head tapped Shikaku's shoulder. So? Who's telling this to Kurunai? Tsum asked and everyone glanced at Shikaku making the Nara sweat drop. Sigh, so damn bothersome. She's going to kill me, Shikaku said, and everyone patted him on the shoulder and wished him the best of luck with the Ice Queen of Kanoha. Back with teammate, two days later. Naruto sighed as he looked out of the bow of the ship. He was so bored. They had been at the sea for two days and so far there were no bandits to fight at all. He figured that they should be grateful for that, but still he would have liked something to do. Anko had been teaching them her chakra control exercises, which even involved Shikamaru and Hinata trying to walk on water with their chakra, and the end result was them falling more than a couple of times, but they got that down no problem after the first few attempts. It made Naruto slightly smile because it took him no more than a few hours to learn it. Naruto turned his head and saw Shikamaru on the deck looking up at the clouds, while Hinata and Anko were talking about something. He then opened his jacket and watched Mikata uncurl from the ball she had tied herself in to conserve her body heat. Naruto chuckled as he soon saw Mikata look at him. Is something wrong Naruto-sama? Mikata asked and Naruto shook his head. Mikata forked her tongue for a bit and she tensed up which made Naruto know that something was wrong. The last time Mikata tensed up was when she felt a small disturbance when Naruto was training with Kurunai at one point. Her tensing meant something was about to go down and it might be bad. Mikata do you feel something? Naruto asked and Mikata nodded. She slithered out of Naruto's jacket and proceeded to wrap around his neck. People are coming Naruto-sama. I don't know how many, but there is so many dangerous in their group, Mikata told him, and Naruto quickly stood to his feet. He saw a fog rolling in and narrowed his eyes. It was still sunlight and no fog should be coming in unless it was an unnatural fog. Naruto walked over to Shikamaru and woke him horsepower which irked the Nara a bit. Naruto, what's that matter? Shikamaru asked and Naruto narrowed his eyes. We're about to have some company, Naruto told Shikamaru, and the Nara fully woke up. They walked over to Anko and Hinata deciding to warn them also. Anko ni Mikata thinks we're about to have some company and I believe her. There is a fog rolling in at the moment, Naruto said to his sister, and Anko got up also with a sigh. She narrowed her eyes with a nod before she bit her thumb. Puchius no jutsu, Anko yelled, and soon a medium-sized python came on the deck of the ship. Greetings Anko-sama. How may I help you? The snake asked and Anko grinned. 
We're about to have some company. Can you help take care of it? Anko asked and the snake nodded. He then turned to see Mikata and grinned. Come on kiddo. If you're going to be Naruto-sama's familiar then you'll need the training also, the snake said and Mikata nodded, then they both slithered off into the water and disappeared. Naruto and his team waited as the fog rolled over the ship, and Anko barked her orders. Everyone get under the deck and don't come out till we say so, Anko yelled, and all the workers went below deck, while Naruto took out his kadachi. Alright here we go, Naruto said as he weaved his hand signs. He carefully sunk into the ground while Anko smirked. Using one of his Kachan's favorite techniques. That's just like him, Anko said as she quickly hid behind a door while Shikamaru and Hinata in a door next to hers. The four saw about four boats arrive each with three people in them. Teammate could only watch as they boarded the ship and looked around. On my signal, Anko said as the bandits look around. Soon another person came on and she smiled. She had a sword attached to her back, but her face was covered with a hunter nin mask. She was in her mid-twenties while she had blue hair flowing down her form. The only reason Naruto knew she was a girl was because she had the figure of one. At least he knew she was a girl and not some guy looking like one. That'd be so weird. There doesn't seem to be anyone here Kyoko-sama, a bandit said, and the woman smiled before she chuckled. Don't be naive. There is always someone here. I didn't get to be Yagura-sama's second in command by going on things like that, Kyoko said, making Naruto raise an eyebrow. Who's Yagura? Naruto wondered, but then the girl unsheathed her sword and stepped forward. We know you're in here if you don't want to die then you will come out immediately, she said, and everyone tensed. Hearing no response, Kyoko chuckled as her sword glowed in seals. She walked around the ship and slashed a small barrel making it explode. Now. She yelled and everyone tensed again. Anko sighed as she gave a small signal that everyone on her team noticed before she opened the door with her hands up. Alright calm down. I'm here are you happy now? Anko asked and the woman chuckled as she walked up to the snake mistress. So Konoha is here. I hope you know what I want, Kyoko said, and Anko raised an eyebrow. She put a finger to her chin and shrugged her shoulders. Sorry, but I've got no idea what you could want. Mind telling me? Anko asked, and the Kyoko woman's eyebrow twitched before she pointed her sword at Anko's throat. I don't enjoy jokes so I suggest that you tell me right now, Kyoko said as Anko narrowed her eyes. The snake mistress bared a glance at Naruto who grinned like mad, and she sighed. I really don't know what the hell you want, Anko said, and Kyoko chuckled before she turned around. She snickered making her men back up out of fear before she turned to Anko and glared at the woman. Everyone wants to play with me. They don't take me seriously. They think I'm an idiot. I want that document to Numa no Kuni. I refuse for them to gain any ground. Do you know what they did to me? I'll kill anyone who tried to make contact with them, Kyoko said to Anko, and the purple-haired woman raised an eyebrow again before chuckling. Oh is that all you wanted? Well tough luck cause you'll have to kill me to take it, Anko said with a smile making Shikamaru and Hinata widen their eyes. Anko winked at Naruto, and the blonde quickly went through his hand signs, while Kyoko shrugged. Suit yourself, Kyoko said as she easily slashed Anko in half. The snake mistress gasped as she started to blood. Kyoko grinned at her accomplishment before the vision of Anko faded into nothingness making her frown. It's a trick, Kyoko yelled as Naruto jumped out of the ground and smiled. Isn't that obvious? Naruto asked as everyone turned around. Naruto finished his hand signs and grinned. Ninjutsu. Kakuanjo no Jutsu illusion. Infinite darkness technique, Naruto yelled as the darkness quickly enveloped everyone in the vicinity. This was the only air rank Ninjutsu technique that he knew. It was also the only one that he learned that wasn't made from his mother. Lastly, it was the only air rank technique he knew altogether. Gurunai had showed him the technique during one of their training sessions. She said that all true Jinjutsu users knew this technique, and she only told Naruto to use it if the situation called for it, which he figured was a good enough time for this. Ayoko and her men tensed as they felt the darkness around them. It was kind of heavy and at the same time very thick. Hey Kyoko-sama how do we get out of here? I can't see anything in front of me, the guy said, and Kyoko rolled her eyes. Calm down, this is nothing, Kyoko said before she felt a slash come across her side. She winced at the pain, then gasped as she was kicked across the face sending her to the ground. Kyoko cursed as she got to her feet. Shikamaru it's time that you did your part, Naruto yelled, and Shikamaru nodded as he knelt down on one knee and did his hand signs. Hagime no jutsu, Shikamaru yelled as he sent his shadow going for the figures. He was lucky that they were standing still thanks to Naruto's jinjutsu, and they stayed that way. Hagime's success, Shikamaru said as Anko signaled for Hinata. The Hayuga charged at Kyoko's men and quickly disabled them with her Jayuikin and Byakugan. She wasted no time at all, and she was luck just as Kyoko grew aware of her surroundings. Damn Brad I'm gonna get you for that, Kyoko said as she charged at Naruto. 
The blonde widened his eyes as she slashed her sword at him, but Naruto dodged her and grinned as he took out his kadachi. He quickly went through a hand sign while Kyoko looked at the ground. Hi Naruto said as a seal tag exploded, but Kyoko easily dodged it and turned to Anko. Not bad for the snake mistress of Konoha. You have some good genin, Kyoko said as she turned around to Anko. The snake mistress chuckled with a nod as she dropped into a tajutsu stance. Well I try. Don't lower your guard or my kitties are gonna mess you up Anko said, and she and Kyoko fought each other. They both moved fast and hard as the sounds of kunai filled the boat. Anko handed the document to Naruto, and the blonde grinned as he put it in his pouch, making Kyoko narrow her eyes. You know why don't you remove that mask so I can see the face of the person who's but I'm kicking, Anko said, and Kyoko chuckled at the Takibetsu Jonin. Kyoko reached for her mask, and Naruto waited with some bated breath, but Kyoko put her hand down. Sorry, but no one is to see my face. Now then how about I kill you all take that note and rip it to shreds, Kyoko said with a smile behind her mask, as Naruto came in front of Anko. With who? It hardly seems fair that it's four against one, Naruto said, and Kyoko chuckled as she raised her hand into the air. Don't worry about that as I have, she stopped when she heard screaming. Naruto and Anko chuckled as they heard the cries of people about two snakes, as they destroyed the boats and the people on them. Naruto and Anko chuckled as the woman behind the mask gritted her teeth into a smile. Alright kid, you just signed your death wish, Kyoko said, and Naruto quickly blocked her sword strike with his two kadachi, but she was stronger, and he was, and she showed that when she quickly pivoted her foot and in a swift motion, she sent Naruto flying into the air, but the blonde wasn't finished. He watched as Shikamaru and Hinata clashed with her also along with Anko and Naruto had to act fast. Well let's see what can I do. Naruto wondered as he didn't want to destroy the boat, but then he got a good idea. The blonde quickly weaved his hand signs and casted another Jinjutsu, as his teammates began to fade around Kyoko's vision. She watched the ship break apart as she fell into the water. She coughed and looked around. She gasped when the waves picked out around her and consumed her, causing her to stumble further and further into the depths. Kyoko you have failed me, a small young man said, and Kyoko widened her eyes. She was looking at Yugura. Her former Mizukage. Yugura-sama, I didn't fail you, Kyoko said, and Yugura turned his back to her. I have no need for someone like you. Go live out the rest of your days in despair, Yugura said before he disappeared. Kyoko widened her eyes as the darkness whirled around her and easily consumed her. And that's game Dadabeo, Naruto said as Kyoko widened her eyes. She saw she had been pinned to a wall by Anko with a kunai to her neck. She huffed and looked to see Hinata, Shikamaru and Naruto grinning at her. Anko turned around and snickered. Nice Injutsu Naruto, Anko told him while Kyoko raised an eyebrow. Injutsu? She asked and Naruto sheepishly chuckled as he rubbed the back of his head. He patted Hinata's shoulder and Shikamaru's shoulder. He if you guys didn't distract her like we planned then it would have failed. Still I can't believe that worked. I seriously thought she'd kill us, Naruto said making everyone slightly chuckle. Just get it over with. Kill me so I don't have to be near you all anymore, Kyoko said, and everyone rolled their eyes at her. Anko placed a chakra restriction seal on her before walking the Jonin level shinobi to the bottom of the ship. Well we obviously can't leave her down here, so who's going to watch her until we reach the shore? Anko asked deviously making the three genin sweat drop as she pointed out that she wouldn't be doing it. Naruto sighed as he raised his hand offering to do so. Anko smirked and nodded while she, Shikamaru and Hinata left the blonde alone. Naruto sat down in the storage hold of the ship. Ayoko slightly growled while Naruto took out a scroll. Both were relatively quiet and didn't have anything to say to each other, much less acknowledge the other's presence. This was going to be a long boat ride for them both. Back in Kumo. A short blonde-haired girl was seen walking towards the Raikage mansion. She was fairly light-skinned with light blue eyes that showed a small coldness in them. Her clothes consisted of a gray short-sleeved shirt, along with some gray Kumo shorts. She wore some arm guards and leg guards, while she was wearing some black shinobi sandals. She walked along with her teammates who were next to her. One had red hair and the other had white hair. The three were Samui, Kerui and Amoi. They had just received news from their Raikage and were on their way to the mansion. So what do you think he wants with you Samui? You didn't do something did you? Kerry asked with a grin while Samui rolled her eyes. Very funny. Let's get going, Samui said, and her teammates followed her up the stairs of the Raikage mansion. They had all just completed a mission with their sensei. They wanted to rest for a bit, but when Raikage called for them they didn't mind walking for a little longer. Samui knocked on the door and waited for a reply from their Raikage. Come in, a set and Samui opened the door. She walked inside along with her team, and everyone bowed to their Raikage, who made them raise their heads. Everyone did so and stood before A and waited for him to speak. Alright everyone the reason I've called you here is because of a treaty we have made with Konoha, a said making the three genin narrow their eyes. 
They sat down in some chair available to them and allowed their Raikage to continue. Is that a good thing though? Amoy asked and A nodded before continuing. That's right it is. A few hours ago we received a message from Kanoha saying that they would like to enter the treaty with us and we'll be meeting them soon, I said to them and Samui placed on leg over the other. So what does this have to do with us? Samui asked while Kari and Amoy tensed and the Raikage noticed. It's not really all of you, but you Samui. You are going to have a political marriage with their best male genin, I said making Samui narrow her eyes. Kari dropped her jaw and Amoy widened his eyes. You're kidding. Why does Samui have to get married to someone she doesn't know? And why are we even making this treaty at all? Did we do something wrong? Kerry asked before Samui calmed her down along with Amoy. Aside and tapped the desk of his table. You three weren't old enough at the time to know about it, but there was a certain incident that happened between us and Kanoha. I wasn't the Raikage at the time, but my father the Sandane was the Raikage, and he was known for being power hungry on more than one occasion. We had a treaty with Kanoha before, but our Sandane did something. He tried to kidnap the Hyuga clan heiress when she was a child, I said making Samui carry an Amoy gasp, but A continued on. Anyway, the Hyuga killed our Joan and then rescued their heiress back, but learning of it, Kumo warned Kanoha that if we didn't receive some compensation that we'd go to war, and so they offered one of their Hyuga members in return for the life of our own shinobi. Only then did we realize the mistake in what we did, but it was too late. Kanoha hasn't tried anything with us, but we know that they secretly wanted compensation and rather go through another war we both agreed to a political marriage, a finished and Samui looked at the ground. Kerui and Amoy remained silent and let the news sink in. I see, so who am I marrying? Samui asked and Kerui widened her eyes. Samui, you're not really going through with this are you? Kerui asked and Samui nodded. She stood to her feet and simply gazed out the window. It's alright Kerui, Samui said, but Kerui shook her head. No, it's not. You could have a total bastard for a husband and you wouldn't mind, Carrie asked and Samui sighed. She closed her eyes and folded her arms underneath her rather impressive assets. I said it's alright. So Raikage Sama who am I marrying? Samui asked with a cold glare and Ace stood to his feet. We just know it's their top genin. We'll be leaving for Kanoha in a day, but don't worry just yet. Before this marriage can be fully agreeable I'll have something to prove this boy's worth, and if I don't like it, then the marriage might be off or you'll get another mate, I said to her, and Samui merely nodded, while Kerry seems somewhat satisfied with that answer. Well I guess that's great, so what are you going to do? Kerry asked and A grinned. We're going to. In Kanoha. Kurinai widened her eyes at what Shikaku just told her. The Nara head gulped as Kurinai narrowed her eyes into a cold glare, making people around them slightly back away. She quickly got to her feet and walked towards the Hokage mansion. I'm getting an explanation and I'm getting it now, Kurinai said to herself leaving Shikaku mentally screaming for his Hokage to find someplace safe, but it was too late. He followed Kurinai as they walked up the stairs, and while Kurinai was mad, she wasn't mad enough that she would burst into the Hokage's office, but she really had to suppress the urge she knocked on the door waiting for the Hokage to answer. Tsuritobi heard the door get knocked on and gulped. He could feel the Kai radiating through the door, and he really didn't want to open it, but he did nonetheless. Come in, he said with a slight shudder in his voice as Kurinai opened the door. She quickly raced the distance between herself and the Hokage, before she had her hands on the desk. Tsuritobi Sama, please explain to me about the news I just heard. What's this about my son being used in a political marriage to Kumo? Kurinai asked and Tsuritobi gulped again. He could feel the lump in his throat and swallowed it down. Well Kurinai-san let's talk about this calmly alright. Saratobi asked and Kurinai glared at her Hokage for a minute before stepping back and sitting in a chair. Doing that Saratobi explained to her about the entire thing with Kumo making Kurinai understand the situation. She sighed when she calmed down. It was just like her Naruto to be in this situation because he was the strongest genin. That made things difficult. And that's all Kurinai-san. I have told you everything, Saratobi said, and Kurinai leaned her arms on her legs. She looked at the ground and sighed. She closed her eyes for a few minutes and leaned back up. I, I suppose I can see that, but that doesn't mean I approve of this course of action Siratobi sama I'm Naruto's mother and you should have told me, Kurinai told him, and here is an apologized for it. Kurinai rubbed her temples and sighed. I can only wonder how Naruto-kun is going to take this, Kurinai said to herself, but Siratobi nodded also as he wondered how the blonde would take it also. Kurinai got up from her seat fast and headed for the door. I'm going to go think. Oh and Suratobi sama when I'm done thinking about this I want to know why you sent my Naruto-kun on a C-rank mission, Kurinai said as she closed the door with a glare, while Suratobi slammed his head on the desk. This day just wasn't going well for him at all. Back with Naruto. The blonde sighed as he read through his scroll. 
He noticed out of the corner of his eyes that Mikata had slithered down the stairs. The Kyoko woman seemed to notice also, but it confused her when she saw Naruto open his jacket and she watched as the snake slithered into the jacket, then nothing else happened. Naruto sighed as he found it to be late. He got up from where he was sitting and walked upstairs. Kyoko watched him leave, but he quickly came back two minutes later with a tray of food. He walked up to her and sighed. Here you should eat something, Naruto said, but Kyoko just stayed silent and ignored him. Naruto's eyebrow twitched as he glared at the woman in the white mask. He sighed and knelt down. He grabbed her mask which certainly got a rise out of her at the moment. What the hell are you doing brat? Let go of my mask. She yelled as Naruto stopped his hand. Oh so you can talk. I thought a snake had your tongue for a second. Now then eat, you need your strength, Naruto told her, and the swordswoman glared at her captor. I'm fine now leave me alone, Kyoko said, and Naruto sighed as he left the tray in front of her. He then sat back down in his spot and continued to read his scroll before he muttered something. Don't be mad at me cause you fell for a C rank jinjutsu, Naruto said with a snickered, and the woman gritted her teeth at behind her mask. Who was this guy that could piss her off so much? HMPH I was simply distracted. Plus I wasn't even serious that's why you won. Don't get cocky, she muttered and Naruto chuckled. And that's why you're tied up and hungry, but too damn stubborn to eat the food I want to give you, the blonde told her, and Kyoko growled. It was also embarrassing when he stomach growled, making Naruto give a hidden smirk. Hold your dad abeo, Naruto said, and Kyoko growled again. HMPH, maybe you need food, but I don't just go back to reading your worthless scroll right there, Kyoko told him, and Naruto turned to her. He stood up and walked over to her and reached for her mask. Don't you dare touch me. Kyoko yelled and Naruto didn't stop. He took off her mask and watched her remaining hair fall to the sides of her face. Naruto raised an eyebrow at her before he had one word to say. Beautiful, the blonde said in slight awe, and Kyoko raised an eyebrow before slightly blushing. Shut up and put my mask back on, she said to him, and Naruto shook his head. Why should you hide your face? If you weren't the enemy I might say you were something nice, Naruto told her and Kyoko snorted. Flattery gets you nowhere, Kyoko said, and Naruto simply shrugged his shoulders while Kyoko was wondering why she was even talking to the blonde in the first place. She easily tried to chalk that up to the boredom of being tied up. Not to mention she was also hungry, but her pride made her refuse. So are you going to eat or not? Naruto asked and his response was a HMPH, while Kyoko turned her back to him. Naruto chuckled as he rubbed the back of his head. He knew this type of woman as he saw a lot of her in his sister, Anko. I'll never eat that slop, Kyoko said to him, and Naruto grinned as he took a spoonful of food. Alright I guess I'll eat it myself. I hate to let food go to waste, Naruto said to her and Kyoko's eyebrow twitched. She heard the utensils clatter over the plates as she heard Naruto compliment the food. She could feel her resolve weakening as her stomach grew tighter. Her hair shadowed her eyes and she gritted her teeth. Back off the food it's. Kyoko stopped as Naruto popped the spoon in her mouth and smiled as he saw Kyoko's surprised face. The blonde took it out of her mouth and smiled as Kyoko swallowed the food. I can eat by myself, the woman said, and Naruto nodded as he took another spoonful of food and held it up to her mouth. The woman glared at him, and Naruto simply kept up his smile. Just eat the food Dadabeo, Naruto told her, and Kyoko grumbled before reluctantly taking more of the food. Naruto continued this process until all the food was gone, and the woman was satisfied. The blonde sighed and grinned. Now was that so hard? Naruto asked and Kyoko rolled her eyes at him before the blonde walked back to his seat and opened up a book. I knew I saw your face before. You're Kyoko Fura, the A-ranked missing nin from Kurigakur. You're wanted by nearly all of Kiri, Naruto said, and Kyoko raised an eyebrow. Mind telling me why a genin knows about the bingo book? Kyoko and Naruto chuckled. You don't want to know about that. It's a stupid story. So what about you? Never thought you'd hate Numa no Kuni so much, Naruto said, and he noticed the extra deep scowl on her face. It doesn't matter. It's not like you could understand, Kyoko said to Naruto, and the blonde looked up at the ceiling for a second. Try me dadabeo, Naruto said, and Kyoko rolled her eyes. She decided to humor the blonde and told him some of her life and her problems with Marsh Country. Naruto was shocked to learn that she was originally a shinobi from the country, but it was ruled by a tyrant daimyo. Anyone who tried to fight him was executed. She told him about Aur's parents and how they died because of being in the middle of one of the raids the daimyo did to everyone. She told him how she narrowly escaped death the few times that she had tried to run away, and the time that she succeeded was when she saw Yugura and agreed to follow him, but he was beginning to show tyranny to his subjects as he started the bloodline purge. She said how she couldn't take him anymore and left to be deemed a traitor for her life. When Kyoko stopped talking she didn't realize that it was almost close to morning. And that's why I hate the Martian Kiri. People too proud of power that they try and usurp others and abuse them. 
That's why I hate them, Kyoko said, and Naruto chuckled, then laughed making Kyoko raise an eyebrow. Why the hell are you laughing? She asked and Naruto shook his head in an apology. Sorry sorry. I didn't mean to laugh it's just that I can sort of relate to those like you, Naruto told her, and Kyoko narrowed her eyes at him before Naruto explained. It was now his turn as he told Kyoko about his life. He told her about being hated by his village and how he was beaten nearly every single day for reasons that he didn't know. He also told her about how his village's council would try to make his life even more miserable than it was. Needless to say, Kyoko had to ask her own question to the blonde. So why do you stay there? You should leave and come with me, Kyoko said enjoying the suggestion even if she didn't want to admit it, but Naruto smiled and shook his head. Because I have important people in there. I have my mother, my sister, my team and my friends back in Konoha. It's not a bad place, but I have power also. I don't abuse it, and I fight to protect what's important to me, Naruto told her, and Kyoko sighed as she leaned her head back into the wall. What a cheeky brat you are, she said, and Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Hey at least we're having an engaging conversation now, Naruto told her, and Kyoko actually did something he didn't expect. She chuckled. It was a nice laugh, very melodious and different from the usual chuckle she gave when they were fighting. I suppose. Oh well at least before I die I'll be able to say I had an interesting conversation with someone, Kyoko said, and Naruto raised an eyebrow. Who said you're going to die? Naruto asked and Kyoko snorted. Well you are going to turn me to Kiri for the reward aren't you? Kyoko asked and Naruto snorted back making her look at him in confusion. I could do that or I could ask that you come back to my village with me, Naruto said, and Kyoko looked at him incredulously. You're a few kunai shy of a set if you think I'm going to align myself to another power-hungry village, and judging by the way you said you were treated, I'd rather take my chances being on my own, Kyoko said, and Naruto got up and walked over to her. He sat next to her and smiled. Come on, you know you want to come. Have a nice hot meal every day, get a nice warm bath. I doubt you get that every day, Naruto told her, and Kyoko felt some of her resolve weaken. She really hadn't had any of that in a while. In fact her latest meal was the one that Naruto fed her. HMPH, bribery doesn't work on me Brad. I've been through a lot not to get worked up over that, Kyoko said, and Naruto grinned. Oh come on Kyoko ni you know you want to come, Naruto said, and immediately Kyoko glared at him. Who the hell are you calling Kyoko ni? That better not be me, Kyoko said, and Naruto chuckled. Is there any other Kyoko ni in here? Naruto asked and Kyoko fed again. She gave a small smirk and turned to him. You're weird, she said, and Naruto smiled at her. He simply nodded and rubbed his head. Achan said that too. I wonder why, Naruto said, and Kyoko snorted. It's because you don't know how to get some sense when someone talks to you, Kyoko said to him and Naruto pouted. Hey I have sense. I have better sense than you. Man, you wore a mask for crying out loud, and I was just trying to be nice. And. It's morning, Naruto said as Kyoko looked to see the sun coming up through the stairway. They had been talking all night. No sleep. I've never not slept before. I must be so tired Dadabeo, Naruto panicked, and Kyoko chuckled. She tried to sit up on her knees and blushed. Just sleep on my damn lap. Man this is your fault. I can't believe I'm opening up to someone like you. Someone I could confide in. How unsightly for me, Kyoko said, but then she felt a plop on her lap and saw Naruto sleeping soundly. She gawked for a few minutes before sighing and looking at the ceiling. She widened her eyes when she saw Anko looking at her through the stairs. So Miss Missing Nin has a bit of a soft side for my little brother huh? Anko said and Kyoko rolled her eyes. Don't you dare say anything to anyone. Kyoko whispered and Anko knelt down in front of her. Hey I love my little brother too. I just didn't think that he got you to open up in about 8 to 10 hours. It's better than what I could possibly do, Anko said, and Kyoko rolled her eyes. Both saw Naruto nudge a bit on Kyoko's lap before they sighed. Well silence irks me to no end. I swear his attitude is a disease. I just found myself talking and talking with him as the night went on. He's a weird brat, Kyoko said, and Anko nodded before smiling. Yeah he's like that. He just has a quality that makes anyone like him when they have the time to talk to him. I could never figure it out. Hell I bet he could become friends with the entire world if they all had the chance to talk with him, Anko said, and Kyoko looked at him. No one's ever called me Kyoko ni. It's weird to hear it for the first time, but not in a bad way I guess. Do you think he was joking when he said he'd like me to go back with him? Kyoko asked and Anko's smile faded slightly. He's not like that at all. If he wanted you to come back then he wanted you to come back. He's always been like that. Hell that's how he found Mikata, Anko said, and Kyoko raised an eyebrow. Mikata? She asked and Anko unzipped Naruto's jacket and both looking inside at the sleeping snake. Is snake familiar? 
Found her out in the training ground, she was injured, he helped her and brought her home. Maybe you should be like Mikata, Anko suggested, and Kyoko rolled her eyes. She looked to the side at some barrels and slowly thought to herself. She muttered things over and sighed. I guess if he's there then a place won't be so bad, even if I hate some of your power-hungry officials, but I guess he could be right. Just so you know I'm not doing this for you, him or anyone else. I'm doing this for me and me alone, Kyoko said, and Anko smirked. Whatever floats your boat. So do you still want this document or not? The snake mistress asked waving it in front of Kyoko, and the swordswoman slightly glared before huffing. Get that thing out of my sight before I rip it to shreds, Kyoko said with a huff, and Anko nodded getting rid of it. Both looked down at Naruto who yawned. Anko ni, Kyoko ni it's my Raymond, Naruto said making Anko and Kyoko chuckle before the captive's eyes gleamed. Raymond? Did he say Raymond? Kanoha has Raymond. I love Raymond. Kyoko said almost aloud waking Naruto up as Anko snickered. Yep, she's definitely like Naruto. Tuchi you're about to get some real good business, Anko said to herself before she took out a kunai. I still wonder about your intentions, but hey if someone's right to me then I have no reason to keep them tied up, but one wrong move, and I'll show you why I'm the second best at the interrogation department of Konoha, Anko said as she untied Kyoko's ropes. The blue-haired woman sighed as she raised her hand. Anko almost tensed before Kyoko lowered it and ruffled Naruto's hair before smiling. He's a pain, but he's cute when he's sleeping, Kyoko said, and Anko nodded. Soon Shikamaru and Hinata came down the stairs. Anko sensei we. Found. Land. Shikamaru paused as he saw their captive stroking Naruto's blonde hair. He turned to see Anko grinning while Hinata seemed confused. Um did I miss something? Shikamaru asked as Kyoko glared at the Nara. Quiet, if you wake him up then by Kami I'll cut you in half, Kyoko said as Shikamaru quickly backed away. Troublesome woman, the Nara said next to the stairs, but they had to wake the blonde up, even if he wasn't sleeping long. Naruto we have a mission to do so let's go. It won't take long so you can go to sleep on the ride back, Anko said, and Naruto quickly got up. He rubbed his eyes and everyone walked out of the boat. The walk to the palace was relatively short for everyone as the mansion wasn't far. They entered the mansion and came up to the man in charge. Ah so I guess you made it. How nice. I was hoping you would, the man said as Anko handed him the note. He looked over its contents and nodded before giving them the Marsh Country's reply. Anko put it away, and just as easily they were ready to set sail again. Naruto had complained that there was no action involved in the fight, but Kyoko countered and asked him if she wasn't enough of a challenge which Naruto gulped and immediately told her that she was. After that, Kyoko and Naruto were busy sleeping beside each other on the deck of the ship while Shikamaru and Hinata turned to Anko. Even I have to find that weird. She was our enemy just a day ago. How did Naruto change her in that time? Shikamaru asked and Anko grinned. That's just like him I guess. We should just be lucky that this mission went off without a hitch, Anko said, and soon the waters began to rumble and shake violently. Everyone shifted under the heavy waves before they saw something emerge from the sea. WWW what is that? Hinata asked widening her eyes in fear. Shikamaru sighed as he rubbed the back of his head. Oh man that is such a drag, Shikamaru said while Anko whistled. A giant kraken came out of the water and roared out at them, making the waves crash around. Everyone braced for the edges of the ship and noticed Naruto and Kyoko still sleeping. How can they still sleep? Shikamaru wondered, and the giant creature roared again making Kyoko open her eyes. She growled and stood to her feet. She saw everyone pointing behind her, and the blue-haired woman turned around to see the giant creature behind her. You woke me up from my nap. I hate being woken up, Kyoko said as she grabbed her sword. She unsheathed it and quickly brought it back. The creature roared and thrashed around before Kyoko jumped into the air. Banish. In the hidden storm. Hijutsu. Maya Kidmari IJI hidden blade technique. Pulsation rage, Kyoko yelled as she slashed at the kraken, and a light blue aura surrounded her sword, as she making it shine blinding everyone as Kyoko hit the ground. She sheathed her sword and smirked. Not enough to scare me, Kyoko said as the creature fell into the ocean with multiple slash marks around its body. Everyone gasped as Kyoko sat back down next to Naruto. How did you do that? You really are a kinjutsu woman, Shikamaru said, and Kyoko raised a tired eye at them all. It's easy enough. I told you I was previously one of the swordsmen of the mist. Defeating something like that is child's play, Kyoko said, and Hinata quickly waked over also. Be, but we were able to fight you almost by ourselves, how could you be taken so easily? Hinata asked her and Kyoko rubbed the back of her head and chuckled. Two reasons one it was four against one, Kyoko said making everyone nod with that as she sort of blushed in embarrassment at the second one. And the second one is that. I suck at trying to dispel Jinjutsu, Kyoko said making everyone fall completely which made her laugh. Naruto yawned as he woke up also. 
What's all the noise about Dadabeo? Naruto asked rubbing his eyes, and Kyoko shrugged her shoulders. Come on people keep it down. We're trying to sleep here, she said as the two quickly laid back down on the deck and went to sleep making Anko gulp. Nai-chan is going to kill me for this, Anko thought as she watched Naruto and Kyoko sleep. Teammate had no idea what was in store for them at the moment when they got back home. In Konoha, two days later. Saratobi was currently writing and signing some more documents in his office as he blew a puff of his smoke. The sand aim sighed at the slow day the village was having. He and Kurinai had talked about some things, and Saratobi agreed that she should be there when the Raikage came so she could get a look at the woman that Naruto was supposed to marry. Granted it still irked her that her own son was being used in a political marriage, there wasn't all that much that she could do. I really wish there was something going on. Oh well at least a day is slow. Any surprises would be greatly welcomed in my personal opinion, Saratobi said to himself before someone came through the door. He looked up to see Kanoha's two gate guards, Izumo and Kitetsu. Something I can help you too with. Saratobi asked while Izumo and Kitetsu gulped and stepped to the side. Soon the Raikage came through the door with a grin, while Saratobi widened his eyes. Yeah, you can greet us Hokage Dono, I said while Saratobi stood to his feet. He quickly walked around the corner of his desk. Raikage Dono, when did you arrive? I wasn't even informed that you had appeared in the village, Saratobi said as A walked inside along with Samui, Kari and Amoi. It's a small surprise Hokage Dono. Don't read too much into it. Now then I'd like to talk with you about what we discussed in our letter, I said, and Saratobi sighed. When he said he wanted a surprise that wasn't exactly what he meant, but ask and you receive something even if you're not expecting it. Well it is a pleasure that you've arrived Raikage Dono. Unfortunately our genin that we would have you meet is out on a mission with his squad at the moment. He would return soon enough so I'd appreciate it if you could wait for his return, Saratobi said and A nodded. The Hokage snapped his finger and immediately an Anbu bowed before him. See that the Raikage and his associates are treated with hospitality, Saratobi commanded, and the Anbu nodded as he showed them the door. Kanoha sure knows how to be polite at least, Kari said to her teammates making Amoy nod while Samui stayed silent. The four were guided out of the room while Saratobi sighed. Okage-sama any reason why Kumo is here? Kitetsu asked, and the sand aim sighed as he rubbed the back of his head. It's something you'll know about later, but for now don't ask any questions. Also get Kurinai sent for me. She and her team should still be finishing up a D-rank mission, so I'm sure she will want to know everything. You're dismissed, Saratobi said, and the two Chunin vanished out of sight while Saratobi sat back down in his chair. This was all going to become a massive headache to him. With Kurinai Yuhi. Kurinai watched Hino, Chaoji and Shino do their work of painting the fences of a client while she heard the small grumbles from the blonde of the group, but that was understandable. Missions like these had no use for Shinobi. Doing chores that civilians were too lazy to do themselves. It staggered the mind of how different things were from back when Kurinai was a child. Kurinai-sensei how long do we have to do this menial labor? Hino asked while Kurinai sighed before getting to her feet. This is to help you build teamwork Hino. You must master this before you take on the higher missions, Kurinai said while Shino turned to Ino. This is the most logical conclusion Ino. We know nothing about each other, and if we're not prepared then we won't know our enemy, the Abiram responded, and Ino just settled for nodding. Whatever bug boy. Sigh, I wonder what Sasuke-kun and Naruto-kun are doing, Ino said daydreaming, while Chaoji's stomach grumbled. I'm hungry. When is lunch? Chaoji grumbled making Kurinai sigh at her team, but she could deal with it she figured. Soon the Jinjutsu mistress turned around to see Azuma walking up to her. She raised an eyebrow while Ino, Shino, and Chaoji glanced at the two. Azuma, what are you doing here? Kurinai asked and Azuma gulped. He whispered in her ear and Team 9 noticed Kurinai narrow her eyes as she visibly tensed slightly before they saw Azuma disappear. Kurinai sensei what's wrong? Ino asked and the Jinjutsu mistress turned to her squad. After we're done with this mission you three will have the day off. We were scheduled for training exercises, but something came up and I'll have to do it later. We'll probably do this tomorrow. Now come on and get this work done, Kurinai said clapping her hands as the three continued. None of them saw Kurinai's cold glare as she looked at the sky for a bit. So he's here huh? Well that's not going to be good, Kurinai thought as she wondered where her son was at the moment. With teammate. Anko and her squad currently left the port with their newest accessory and were traveling back on the road into Kanoha. Everyone was currently conversing amongst themselves about how everything went down. So Kyoko-chan defeated a giant sea monster with one technique of her sword. That's awesome, Naruto exclaimed, and Kyoko rubbed the back of her head with a small blush. I told you guys it was no big deal. I was one of Kiri's top swordsmen. It was no big deal to me at all. So when are we supposed to be arriving in Kanoha anyway? Kyoko asked and Anko took out the map. 
In about two hours maybe less. For now we'll have to hurry, Anko said, and everyone rushed through the trees. They all couldn't wait to tell their Hokage about the success of their mission and who they even got for a friend out of it. So you suck at dispelling Jinjutsu? What's up with that? Naruto asked with a laugh while Kyoko smacked him over the head. Hey I'm still a good shinobi without learning how to do that. Show some respect, she said to him, and Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Sorry I just didn't know that one of Kiri's swordsmen was able to get caught in a C-rank Jinjutsu. It's funny, Naruto said to her, and Kyoko narrowed her eyes while Hinata and Shikamaru snickered. HMPH, whatever. I could still kick your butt if I wanted, she said, and Naruto raised an eyebrow. Anko face palmed herself while Hinata and Shikamaru wondered if this was about to become something very weird. You're on Kyoko-chan. Maybe I'll take it easy on you and use a simple D-rank Jinjutsu this time as you had trouble with that C-rank, Naruto said as he saw Kyoko's blue hair shadowing her eyes. The blonde gulped before he quickly shot forward while Kyoko grabbed her sword. Okay brat. I'll teach you. Kyoko yelled chasing after Naruto, while the rest of the group continued to laugh. They're so troublesome. They act like they were never enemies, Shikamaru said while Anko nodded. She could definitely see the smiles on Kyoko's face. It must have been one of the first real smiles she had ever given or allowed herself to show. Sometimes it's better that way. You meet a lot of strange people in the world. It seems she was just lucky to meet Naruto or who knows what she would become. Remember this rule you two as both Naruto and Kyoko know this all too well. Yesterday's enemy might be tomorrow's friend. Never forget that and you'll strengthen your bonds a lot of times, Anko instructed making Shikamaru and Hinata nod while they saw Kyoko still chasing Naruto. Then Naruto-kun's formation of bonds must be a strange thing, Hinata said, making Anko nod while Shikamaru sighed. Sigh, the only bond I want to make right now is one with my pillow. Man I'm tired, Shikamaru muttered while Anko rolled her eyes. Aki you're always tired. Don't worry I'll beat that laziness out of you, Anko said with a cheeky grin, while Shikamaru effortlessly nodded. Troublesome, the Nara said to himself as everyone continued to run towards their village. Two hours later. Naruto and the group were coming up to the Kanoha gates and sighed in relief. Finally made it. Now we just have to clear this with Jiji, and then we can go home. We can also find you a home also Kyoko-chan, Naruto told her and the blue-haired Kenjutsu woman settled for simply nodding as they approached the gates. They all saw Azumo and Katetsu watching them as usual until they saw Anko's group. Hey Anko, back already? Azumo asked, and the Takibetsu Jonin nodded with a slight grin on her face. That's right. The mission wasn't very difficult. It would have been much less difficult if not for somebody, Anko spoke glaring at Kyoko, who had a slightly confident grin on her face. Well it's nice to see you back, but Hokage-sama needs your team in his office. Well, not his entire team, but more precisely Naruto right now, Kitetsu reported, and Anko raised an eyebrow. Well we were just going there, but what does he need Naruto-kun for? She asked them and the blonde raised an eyebrow. It was a rarity that his Jiji ever needed him for anything, so he wondered what he could want. Naturally Hinata and Shikamaru were curious as to what their Hokage could want with Naruto also, but they figured that they would know about soon enough. Well the Raikage of Kumo is here talking with Hokage-sama, and he just said that he wants to see you know. So you'd better get going now, Izumo told her, and Anko nodded with a slight thank you. Well thank you for that. We'll be going then, Anko said as everyone walked off. They decided not to dawdle any more than they already had. I wonder what he wants with me, Naruto said to them while Shikamaru rubbed his head. Maybe you did your usual pranks. I still remember when you unleashed so many snakes on the academy as a joke and everyone was screaming out at the top of their heads. Sheesh you get that from our sensei I bet, Shikamaru answered, while Kyoko raised an eyebrow. He did what? She asked and Hinata explained the incident, while Naruto and Anko were laughing at the past prank that they did together. Then Naruto-kun had told us about the prank before it actually happened. We were more prepared for it, but soon there was giant ball of cloth that came from the ceiling. It showed a bag of hungry snakes that went for the first thing they could find. Which was us. All the students were screaming like mad, and they closed the academy for three days. And the weird part was that no one figured out who started the entire thing, but we all knew. Since the only ones who were associated with snakes were Naruto-kun and Anko-sensei. It was the only time that the academy had been closed, Hinata finished, and Kyoko glared at Naruto and Anko. Both were ready to get scolded by the Kenjutsu woman, while Kyoko sighed. You guys couldn't do better than that. Kyoko asked making Naruto and Anko widen their eyes, while Hinata and Shikamaru turned to her like she was insane. What did you say? Anko asked and Kyoko rolled her eyes. She wrapped her arm around Naruto's neck and grinned. I said you couldn't do better than that. Come on I did better than that during my academy days, Kyoko said, and Naruto raised an eyebrow. Oh. And how did the great Kyoko-sama do her pranks? 
Naruto asked and Kyoko chuckled evilly making Hinata and Shikamaru back away slightly. Are you kidding? I was able to close our academy for two months all with a pencil, some glue and 12 sets of kunai, Kyoko said while Naruto gasped, and so did Anko. Kyoko-chan you have to tell us how you did it, Naruto said as they walked up the stairs, while Kyoko visibly smirked with a hidden gleam in her eye. Well alright. It all started when. Hokage office. Tsuritobi, Kurunai along with the Raikage and Team Samui were all waiting for Naruto's group to arrive. While they were waiting Kari snuck behind Samui and decided to whisper in her ear. Are you sure about this Samui? You've never met this guy before. How can you live with something like this? Kari asked and Samui closed her eyes. Harry just be cool and don't let it bother you. I told you it was alright. Whoever I marry won't matter to me, Samui responded and Carrie sighed. She hated that impassive side of her teammate, but knew she couldn't do anything to stop her. Amoy sighed and rubbed his head. At least with Raikage-sama plan, you might not have to marry him if he doesn't pass Raikage-sama's requirement, Amoy said, and Carrie nodded with a slight snicker, but then Samui glared at them both. It's not cool to wish for someone's demise. You don't even know him so don't talk trash about someone understand. Samui asked and Kari nodded along with Amoy. The two apologized to the blonde girl as they heard a knock at the door. Come in, Saratobi said, and immediately the door opened. Both he and Kurunai smiled as they saw Naruto, Hinata, Shikamaru and Anko come through the door. They were surprised at a mysterious woman who appeared with them also, but that could be dealt with later. Hello Anko, how was the mission? Saratobi asked and Anko gave him a thumbs up as she handed him the mission report. It was a complete success Hokage-sama. I believe you remember our deal. Anko asked and Saratobi nodded, but then she noticed Kurunai glaring at her, and Anko sheepishly chuckled while rubbing the back of her head. H. Hey Nai chan I can explain, Anko said while Kurunai rubbed the bridge of her nose and waved Anko off. She had more important things to worry about than that at the moment, so she let it go. For now. Don't bother Anko. Congratulations on your mission Naruto-kun, Kurunai said with a smile, and Naruto chuckled as he rubbed the back of his head. Thank you Kachan, but Jiji why did you call us? Naruto asked as before he saw the Raikage, Samui, Kari and Amoy staring at them. Hinata and Shikamaru looked at them also with confused expressions on their faces. Well Naruto-kun before we get to that I'd like you to meet the Raikage of Kumo, along with his associate Samui, Amoy and Kari, Saratobi said, and Naruto bowed to them all, before paying some attention to Samui personally. The two glared at each other, and Samui did her best cold glare at the blonde, and Naruto narrowed his eyes. He glared at Samui coldly also making everyone wonder what the two were thinking staring at each other. Soon they both broke their glares from each other and unknown to the other they both mentally smirked. He might not be so bad. He's kind of cool, Samui thought while Naruto rubbed his head while he went back to that glare. She's good. She definitely has Kachan's glare if nothing else, Naruto thought, but then he was brought out of his stupor while Saratobi and A clapped their hands. Raikage don't know I'd like you to meet Naruto Yuhi Uzumaki. Our top graduating genin, Hiruzen told him and A raised an eyebrow. Uzumaki. He wondered for a split second, but quickly grinned as he looked over the blonde. He eyed him from head to toe and could tell that he looked talented for his age. Nice to meet you Yuhi Uzumaki-san. Please meet our top genin Samui, as said as the next blonde bowed to him also. Naruto bowed to her before he turned to his Hokage in confusion. Digi what's this all about? Is something going on? Naruto asked, and the Hokage took a puff of his smoke. He sighed while Kurunai looked at the ground. Samui and the rest were confused. Naruto should have known about already. It was a wonder that he didn't, but Saratobi was about to explain so they all stayed quiet. Naruto-kun, a few days ago Kanoha received a note from Kumo. They had agreed to a treaty with Kanoha after an incident that happened with the Hayuga compound, Saratobi paused as he looked at Hinata slightly, and the Hayuga slightly lowered her gaze before the Hokage continued. Anyways, Kanoha agreed to the treaty, but it was only by political marriage of our top genin with their top genin. Naruto, as of now you are engaged to Samui-san, Saratobi paused while Naruto widened his eyes. Hinata gasped while Shikamaru widened his eyes also. Anko narrowed her eyes and looked between Naruto and Samui. Wait, why weren't we told about this? Anko asked and Saratobi rubbed the top of his head. It's because you and your squad left before we could get to you. So I decided to wait before telling you, Hiruzen replied, and Naruto remained silent. Ayoko watched the exchange between everyone and even she was surprised. She'd never seen a political marriage, only heard about them. This was quite a shock to her. She looked at Naruto's shocked fast and could tell that this was one of those things that really surprised him, as he didn't seem like the type who was surprised by much. I understand that this must be a shock for you Yuzumaki-san, but please accept our offer, a said to him and Naruto's hair shadowed his eyes. 
He looked at the ground and Kur and I wanted to say something, but she felt the words leave her mouth. She, as his mother, wanted to tell him it was his choice, but her shinobi side said that doing so wasn't the best of ideas. Everyone in the room stayed silent for a bit and before Samui walked forward and placed her hand on his shoulder. Uzumaki said I don't know what I can say to you, but I'm fine with it. I really don't know anything about you, but I believe it's cool to meet you and get to know you. I hope you'll feel the same, Samui said, and Naruto stayed silent for a minute. After what seemed like an eternity to everyone else, Naruto finally sighed and scratched the back of his head. Never thought this could happen to me, but alright, Naruto said which confused everyone before the blonde turned around and faced his fiancé. The blonde rubbed the back of his head before he gave a sheepish grin. Well Samui-chan I don't know how this is going to go either, but if you're alright with me, then I don't mind. I hope to get to know you better also, Naruto said, and Samui gave a very small smile and nodded while some people sighed not knowing that they were holding their breath the entire time. So what do you think of him Kari? Amoy asked, and the dark-skinned Kanoichi looked at him from eye to toe, just like her Raikage. At least he doesn't seem to be an idiot, Kari said and Amoy sighed. His teammate could be such a stickler at times, but he knew she was just looking out for Samui, even if he wondered if the blonde Kanoichi needed that. Seeing everyone calm down, Kurinai approached her son and patted him on the shoulder. She always trusted Naruto's judgment at times and just wanted his confirmation. Naruto-kun are you sure? This is a big step you're taking, Kurinai warned him, but Naruto gave her a simple look and smile as he hugged her surprising the Jinjutsu mistress. It's alright Kachan. I can handle it, Naruto said, and Kurinai merely nodded and got back to her feet. Saratobi smiled and so did A, but now it was time to get back to some business. Well it's good that they both agree so that we have no problems, but now onto my conditions, I said and Saratobi nodded while Naruto, Shikamaru, Hinata and Anko wondered what he meant by conditions. Kyoko raised an eyebrow, but stayed silent. She'd speak when she had the opportunity to do so. Conditions. What conditions? Anko asked and A folded his arms. He could tell he was going to make someone unhappy, but he needed his own confirmation as well. It's only one condition actually, but that's beside the point, I said, and everyone paid attention. Kerry snickered and wondered what Naruto's reaction would be to the condition. Simply put I just want to make sure that Naruto-san is as good as you claim him to be. I'd like to propose that if his sensei finds it a good idea that he should participate in the Chunin exams. He must make it to the final round of this tournament along with other competitors. It's with this that I can see what he's made of. I want to tell you that I'm not belittling his skills as a shinobi, but I just want to make sure that this is a wise choice to go along with, I said to everyone. Saratobi nodded and turned to Naruto. Naruto-kun, do you accept this condition? The sande masked and the blonde put a finger to his chin. Soon he looked down and saw Mikata slither out of his jacket. You should take it Naruto-sama, it'll be a good challenge for you, Mikata spoke, and Naruto nodded. He grinned and turned to his teammates. What do you guys think? Naruto asked making Hinata and Shikamaru look at each other. They both lightly smiled before turning back to Naruto. Well I doubt we'll even be your team in the coming months, but if we are then I'm good with it. Even if it is troublesome, Shikamaru said confusing A and the genin with him. What do you mean if? You guys are squad right? Kerui asked wanting to clear up the confusion as Naruto decided to respond to her question. That's right, but apparently Jiji told the Jonin that he's putting us all together to increase our teamwork skills. He thinks it will lead to more mission success for the village in the long run, Naruto replied, and Kari nodded. So Anko do you agree with this condition? Saratobi asked her as she was the sensei. Anko's face beamed with a full smile, and she nodded. Oh yeah. I'll train them all real well for the Chunin exams. You can count on me, Anko said while Saratobi turned to the Raikage. You do realize that I expect the same thing of Samui-san just to be fair, the old Hokage returned making sure that A held up the same type of bargain to which he did with a sure nod. Of course, I expected that, and Samui already told me that she agrees to the conditions also, I replied, and Saratobi nodded. Very well then. I hope to see you around, Saratobi said to him and A nodded, but then he decided to ask for something else. Oh by the way Saratobi, we're going to be here for a few weeks, so may I suggest that twice every week that Naruto and Samui train together. To help them get used to each other, I suggested and Saratobi nodded. He completely agreed with that action. Naruto and Samui glanced at each other for a few seconds before they tore their gazes away, as Naruto watched Samui and her team leave the room, along with their Raikage. Well now that that's over with. Would you mind telling me who this is? Saratobi asked staring at Kyoko who simply smiled as she stood to her feet. I thought all Kage knew the people in their bingo books, Kyoko said, and Saratobi raised an eyebrow at her while Naruto explained. Giji this is Kyoko Fura. An A-rank missing nin from Kiri. 
We convinced her to come to Konoha with us, Naruto said, and that news was almost enough to make Sirotobi almost fall out of his chair, making the others chuckle at him. Sirotobi straightened up and coughed getting his composure back. I see, well that is some news to me. Tell me why do you want to join Konoha? Sirotobi asked and Kyoko looked at Naruto. The blonde smiled with a nod while Kyoko sighed. She rubbed the back of her head before she finally spoke. I'd rather not be a criminal and chaz by Hunter Nin for the rest of my life. The brat right here seems to think that I might do some good in Konoha, so I want to see where that takes me. I can offer you my services if that's what you'd like, Kyoko said, and Sirotobi nodded. Well it's not every day that I meet an ex-swordsman of Kiri. I suppose I can find a job for you. Well it's not like I couldn't. Given your missing Nin rank, I have almost no choice but to make you a Jonin. And I have your first mission for you. On the days that Naruto and Samui train together I want you to be their teacher also. It'll help me stall till I can find out where you belong, Sirotobi told her and Kyoko nodded. The Sandane went into his drawer and pulled out a small piece of paper. Just fill that out for me and return it to me tomorrow. I can set you up with a house in a few minutes, and her is your headband and vest, the Hokage told her, and Kyoko looked at the vest. She slightly frowned as she figured that the vest wasn't a good combination with her hair, but she heard about Jonin who didn't wear their vests, so she figured that she'd do that also. Very well Hokage-sama. I'll return this to you tomorrow. See you later brat, Kyoko said walking out of the room, and she closed the door. Naruto chuckled while Sirotobi brought everyone's attention back to him. Job well done teammate. Your pay will be given to over the week. It seems you were right about the manko. They really do know how to handle themselves. He, Naruto almost reminds me of Sasuke, Sirotobi said, and the blonde raised an eyebrow. How do I remind you of that team? Naruto asked and Sirotobi closed his eyes with a small chuckle. Well when Sasuke learned that you went on a C-rank mission already, he went ballistic and told us that he wanted one also. Kakashi tried to stop him, but we relented and let him go on one. He left about a day ago, Sirotobi said, and Naruto secretly grinned. That the team for ya. Well I'm not losing to him, Naruto said mentally before Sirotobi dismissed them all from the office. Everyone walked the streets of Konoha as they all felt more refreshed from the meeting. So what's everyone going to do now? Naruto asked while Shikamaru yawned. I'm going home and hitting my bed. I've got no more reasons to be awake. See you later, Shikamaru said as he walked off waving goodbye to his friends making Naruto and the others chuckle at him. I am going back home. I have some things to do. Bye Naruto-kun, Hinata said as she walked off also leaving Naruto, Anko and Kurenai in the streets. Well I've got to do the mission report so that I can turn it into Hokage-sama. See you tomorrow Naruto-kun if you're not too busy with your girlfriend, Anko kooed as she walked away making Naruto blush. Wanna go home Kachan? Naruto asked and Kurenai ruffled his hair while she smiled. She quickly nodded as they walked back home. Along the way there, both Kurenai and Naruto could feel the obvious stares on them both. Stares of perversion for Kurenai and stares of hate for Naruto which the two of them glared coldly at everyone making most people gulp and turn their heads to avoid the Ice Queen and what some people called the Ice Fox. You've gotten better with your glare Naruto-kun, Kurenai said, and Naruto narrowed his eyes at one man making him gulp and sweat in bullets. Anyone who stares at my Kachan like this deserves a stare. Besides you taught me how to use it, Naruto said, and Kurenai nodded. The two climbed the stairs of their apartment and Naruto opened the door. Kurenai turned on the lights to their place, and the two sighed as they rested on the couch. So how was your genin team? Naruto asked and Kurenai sighed. They should teach more stuff at the academy. It's good that they passed, but they still have a lot to improve on. I can only hope that they do well, Kurenai said, and Naruto chuckled. Hey you taught me with my high chakra reserves how to do some great jinjutsu. I think you'll be fine with a genin team, Naruto said, and Kurenai snorted. She did see the small logic in that as it took quite a while to get Naruto to have excellent chakra control to project Jinjutsu, but she felt so happy when he was able to do it. It brought a lot of joy to her heart that Kurenai could teach her son Jinjutsu. I suppose you're right. Well we're free so anything you want to do? Kurenai asked and Naruto thought it over. He didn't really have anything planned. Well I guess we can go for a walk if you have the time, Naruto said, and Kurenai was about to agree to it before she heard a knock at the door. The red-eyed Jonin quickly opened the door and saw Hana wave to her. Hana, what are you doing here? Kurenai asked as Hana grinned. Yugao and I scored some free dango meal tickets. Wanna come? We were just about to go invite Anko Hana said, but Kurenai shook her head. Thanks, but I was just about to spend some time with my son. I might go another time, she said, but Naruto patted her shoulder. It's alright Kachan we'll just go another time. Go have some fun, Naruto told her, and Kurenai reluctantly nodded. She quickly changed her clothes and followed Hana out past the door. Naruto sighed as he headed for his room. 
The blonde opened the door and laid on his bed. He unzipped his jacket and watched Mikata slither out. Are you okay Naruto-sama? She asked and the blonde nodded. He quickly sat up and softly petted Mikata from her head to her tail. I'm fine just bored. I guess I'll go back and walk around the village. Are you going to stay here? Naruto asked and Mikata nodded. She forked her tongue and slithered across the floor. There is a moose here. I can smell him. Time to hunt. See you Naruto-sama, Mikata said as she slithered away while Naruto got changed. He put on a blue sleeved shirt and some black pants. He quickly walked out of the house and entered back into the streets of his village. Naruto sighed as he looked around at the people conversing. He had nothing to do really so he was mostly bored. He could train, but he'd be training with Samui tomorrow, so he figured that he could use this as a day off. Let's see, what can I do? Naruto wondered until he decided to see if anyone was at the training grounds. The blonde quickly went to the rooftops and dashed for the training grounds. He'd head for the forest of death, but he knew no one would be there. So on that note, the blonde quickly ran off leaving no one to recognize his presence. Random training ground. Naruto jumped to the ground and looked around. He saw no one there and sighed. Oh well I guess I have this place to myself, Naruto said as he laid near a tree. He quickly looked up at the sky, and soon he found why Shikamaru liked to have a view like this. It was great. The trees were swaying, and the blonde easily fell asleep enjoying the serenity of the forest. Naruto yawned as he opened his eyes. He looked up to see that the sun was going down and wondered how long he had been up. The blonde leaned up and rubbed his head. Ugh how long was I asleep? Naruto asked himself, but then he was surprised by a response. Maybe longer than an hour. You shouldn't leave yourself exposed like that. It's not cool, someone said as Naruto looked up into the tree. He raised an eyebrow when he saw Samui reading a book. Is that so? Well other than you there seems to be no one else here, Naruto returned to his fiancée, and Samui kept her expression impassive. If I was an enemy I might have killed you, Samui said, and Naruto chuckled while he sat down under the tree again. I didn't know my fiancée was supposed to kill me, Naruto replied to her comment and Samui's eyebrow slightly twitched. If you're so is going then you'll end up dead one day. It's not cool to be too relaxed, she said, and Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Well maybe I was pretending to sleep when you found me. Consider that. Naruto asked her, and the blonde Kanoichi stayed silent for a few moments before turning to him. I did not. Maybe you're right. So were you pretend sleeping? Samui asked him and Naruto gave a simple shrug again as he walked into the field. Nah, but I could have been. So what are you doing out here? The blonde asked and Samui placed her book from her face. Enjoying the quiet. What are you doing here? Samui asked and Naruto quickly stopped in the middle of the field. Resting after my mission. Got nothing better to do Dadabeo, Naruto said before he moved to the side to dodge a kunai. It'd be cool if you trained. We are meeting together tomorrow in case you forgot, Samui told him, and Naruto chuckled as he took the kunai and twirled it in his hands. I know it's tomorrow. How about I train and you give me a smile? You haven't smiled once since I saw you a few hours ago, Naruto told her, and Samui rolled her eyes. You're weird you know that Yuzumaki-san? Samui asked and Naruto chuckled. Naruto is fine Samui-chan, and besides it's Yuhi Yuzumaki, Naruto told her, and Samui merely nodded as if going with what he said. I see, well at least you're not how I figured you might be, she said, and Naruto raised an eyebrow as he threw her kunai back at her. Oh? And how did you figure I might be? Naruto asked while Samui put her book away and jumped to the ground. Naruto watched her come down easily while she advanced towards him. Didn't really have much of an opinion, but let's just say that with Carrie's imagination, I was slightly worried to meet you. No offense to you, Samui said impassively and Naruto agreed with her. None taken Samui. I'll mind it without an honorific. He asked and she nodded that it was fine as she didn't really care much for the honorifics either. Samui is cool I guess. Just figured I should get to know you a little before we train tomorrow, Samui told him, and Naruto nodded. I see, well that's always nice to hear. So what do you want to know about me? Naruto asked and Samui shrugged her shoulders. Nothing comes to mind yet. It'll be cool if you told me how you train, Samui said, and Naruto chuckled before he turned to her. Well I could tell you that, but I hardly know you also. Can I ask you a question then? Naruto asked and Samui nodded. The blonde smirked and looked at the sky. What's your last name? You answer me that and I'll answer yours, Naruto said, and Samui's gaze grew cold. Naruto narrowed his eyes, and he gave his best cold glare also. The two stared at each other for a bit while their blue eyes collided against each other. They soon stopped and Samui sighed. I don't have a last name. I never knew my parents. I only have my brother Atsui, Samui responded, and Naruto nodded. He sighed as he wondered if he brought back a bad memory. Oh sorry about that. I didn't know you had that type of past, Naruto said, and Samui shrugged her shoulders. 
It's cool. I've mostly got over it, Samui said to him and Naruto nodded. I didn't know my parents either. No one really tells me about them, Naruto said while Samui raised an eyebrow. If I recall correctly then you called the Jinjutsu mistress, Kachan. Kurinai-san, isn't she your mother? Samui asked and Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Adoptive mother, but yeah. I love her and she's taught me a lot as if I was her own son. So I took on her last name and added it to my name, Naruto said with a gentle smile as he sat down under a tree. Samui remained standing looking at her future husband. I see. Well that's cool, Samui said feeling some small amount of respect for Naruto coming around. Oh and to answer your question, I mostly trained to be an all-rounded shinobi, but I prefer Jinjutsu above the others, Naruto said, and Samui nodded. Well alright. It looks like it's getting late. I guess I'd better go unless you have any more questions. Samui asked and Naruto turned to see the moon going down. He shook his head as he stood to his feet. He quickly dusted himself off and walked over to Samui. He held out his hand making the kumonin look at him strangely. We never really introduced ourselves to each other right? Well I'd like to do that now. Just think of it as a small step to getting to know my fiancé Tadabeo, Naruto said grinning and Samui looked at his hand for a bit. She gave a hidden smile, but shook his hand. I'm Naruto Yuhi Uzumaki. It's nice to meet you Samui, Naruto said to her and Samui nodded. I'm Samui from Kumo. It's nice to meet you Naruto, Samui told him, and the blonde chuckled as he let go. The two began to walk back to the village, while Samui seemed to be in deep thought. Something bothering you? Naruto asked and Samui turned to him. The way you talk, that databeo. What's up with it? Samui asked and Naruto sheepishly chuckled in embarrassment. Achan calls it a verbal tick. It's something I've always said without meaning to. And what about you saying cool a lot? Naruto asked as he knew it had to do with her name in a way. Samui coughed in her hand out of simple embarrassment. It's nothing. It's just a cool word. I like it, Samui said, and Naruto chuckled which got her confused. What's funny? Is it something I said? She asked and Naruto held his hands in defense. No, no Samui-chan. It's just that you're interesting and a lot more mature than some of the people I hang out with, Naruto responded, and Samui seemed to accept it that. Is that a compliment? She asked and the blonde male Jinchuriki quickly nodded that it was which made Samui's mood lighten a bit. Yeah it was. So how do you like Kanoha? He asked and quickly Samui's expression went back to being impassive. It's a nice village. I haven't had the opportunity to come here so it'll be a new experience, Samui answered, and Naruto nodded. It was then that they entered the village, and immediately Naruto's stomach grumbled while he blushed in embarrassment. Also against her wishes, Samui let out a small smile. I guess I'll go and let you eat, Samui said, but then Naruto grabbed her arm. Oh come on and eat with me. You've got nothing better to do so let's go, Naruto told her as he dragged Samui to his favorite place. Samui had never been manhandled before, so this was kind of new to her to his favorite stand. After a bit of walking, Naruto opened the curtain while Samui followed inside. It wasn't her intention to be out this long, but somehow she stayed while Naruto sat on a seat and Samui sat next to him. Hey Tuchi Ajis and mind getting me and Samui some ramen? I'll take one Maizo. How about you Samui-chan? Naruto asked and the blonde girl sighed. She wasn't much on eating such things, not that they had ramen in Kumo or maybe they did, and she just didn't know about it, nor tasted. I guess some shrimp ramen is okay, Samui said, and Tucci nodded. One Maizo and one shrimp. You got it, he said while Naruto looked around. Where's Amni? Naruto asked as Tucci began to do his work. She's gone to the bank. She won't be back for a while, Tucci said, and Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Soon Tucci poured the two their bowls, and Naruto handed Samui her chopsticks. Samui looked at Naruto with a glare while the blonde simply smiled. The blonde girl sighed and took the chopsticks. She watched as Naruto dug into his food while looking down at her own. Naruto turned to her and gulped some of his noodles. Are you alright? Is it not good? Naruto asked and Samui shook her head. No I just don't eat food like this, but I'll try it, Samui said as she picked up the noodles and placed them in her mouth. She slightly widened her eyes before turning her head to see Naruto smiling at her. Samui raised an eyebrow at him, but knew why she was smiling. They were really good noodles. She couldn't deny that fact. Granted they were the only noodles she'd ever had, but they were still good. I take it you like them? Naruto asked and Samui looked back at the still full bowl of noodles. They're cool I guess. Yeah they're quite good, Samui said, and Naruto finished his bowl. Samui took a little longer, but she finished also. Naruto paid Tucci and the two left. Alright Samui I'll see you tomorrow at the training ground where we met last time, Naruto told hours and Samui nodded. She slowly waved goodbye to him as the two walked in separate directions. Unknown to the two there were five shadows watching them. Oh Naruto-kun just had his first date. 
I told you that girl was cute, Anko said, while Hana and Kurinai came out of the shadows. Um, I'd rather not interfere with my son's life, Anko. Why are we even here? Kurinai asked and Anko grinned as she smiled. Are you kidding, Nai-chan? Those two were made for each other, even if that Samui is slightly more serious than someone would like, Anko said while Hana chuckled. Tsonruto's got a fiancé. Never saw it coming. That is going to spread like wildfire in the next few days, Hana said, and Kurinai could agree with that. Well Samui Yuzumaki sounds like a nice name, or maybe it's Samui Yuhi Yuzumaki. Who knows how something like that goes, Anko said, and Kurinai slightly snorted. If only Yugao could enjoy this view with us, Hana said before two other people joined. See Carrie, I told you there was nothing to worry about. Man you're so protective. I wonder if you're trying to be Samui's mother or something, Amoy said which earned him a smack on his head. Shut up Amoy, but I guess you're right. He's at least not an idiot. Heck it's an accomplishment that he got Samui to even eat with him. She never wants to eat with us, Carrie pouted while Amoy chuckled. Maybe she doesn't want to be around your loud mouth that could cause an avalanche, Amoy replied, while Carrie merely growled before the two vanished out of sight. Looks like we're not the only ones who were interested in this new relationship. How nice, Anko said as the three shunshined out of sight also. Somehow, Kurinai managed to beat Naruto home, and when the blonde opened the door, he saw Kurinai sitting on the couch reading while she was humming. Oh Kachan, you're back. How was it with Anko Ni and Hanachan? Naruto asked and Kurinai turned around. It was nice Naruto-kun. Where were you? Kurinai asked with a small snicker, while Naruto raised an eyebrow at her. I was. Out for a bit. Nothing to worry about Kachan. See ya, Naruto said as he went to him room while Kurinai sighed, but that didn't last long as Naruto opened the door. Oh and Kachan if you, Anko Ni and Hanachan are going to spy on me, then please use a higher Jinjutsu cause I dispelled that rather easily, Naruto said as he closed the door leaving Kurinai with her eyes widened at the thought that Naruto had caught her without her knowing. She didn't know whether to be proud or scared of that. I wonder if I trained him too well, Kurinai thought before getting to her feet and walking towards her room. Naruto turned on the lights in his room as he saw Mikata curled into the usual ball she was in. The blonde raised an eyebrow before he sat on the bed, and the vibrations made Mikata stir as she uncurled. Naruto-sama, when did you get home? She asked as Naruto put on his night clothes. Just now Mikata-chan. We've got a busy day tomorrow so let's get some sleep. Did you find your mouse? Naruto asked and Mikata forked her tongue. The up and has settling peacefully in my stomach, Mikata said making Naruto shiver slightly. He turned out the light and quickly went to sleep while he looked at the ceiling. Samui Chan really is interesting, Naruto said in thought as the sleep claimed him and he went to bed. Next morning. Naruto entered the training grounds as he rubbed the back of his head. He hoped he wasn't late as they didn't really decide on a time for them to begin. He didn't even know why he and Samui were having this little training thing. If they were going to be something then it should be natural, but who was Naruto to go against Tukage and their wishes? Oh he'd really like to at the moment. Naruto continued to walk through the training ground until he saw Samui leaning against a tree with her arms crossed and her eyes closed. I see you came here early also, Naruto said as Samui settled with a small nod. She opened her eyes and saw Naruto looking around. So I take it that Jiji told you Kyoko-chan would be training us. Naruto asked and again Samui nodded again like it was a common thing. Naruto sighed as he rubbed the back of his head. He sat down and leaned next to a tree across from Samui, and soon a fog rolled in. The two opened their eyes and saw a small figure arrive. It bigger and bigger before Kyoko came into view with her mask on. So my first mission is training you two huh? Fine, let's get this started, Kyoko said as she took out her sword. Naruto tensed and Samui narrowed her eyes. Unlike your softer Jonan and I won't hold back. Granted I won't kill you both, but you'll be in for a world of hurt. Think you can beat me? Kyoko asked and Naruto stood to his feet. You mean other than the C-rank Jinjutsu I used on your right? Naruto asked and Kyoko slightly grumbled behind her mask before she gave a devious smirk. Samui wondered what Naruto meant by that before Kyoko spoke. Alright brat, then first rule. No Jinjutsu. Any use of it and you two will be running laps around this training field till you drop, Kyoko said with a smirk and Naruto gulped. Samui grabbed the tanto on her back and Naruto grabbed his kadachi. Here I come brats. Try keep up with me, Kyoko said as she vanished in the mist. Naruto and Samui sighed as their training together began, and they were already mentally regretting it. And that's training you too. Good work, Kyoko said to a slashed up Samui and a bruised Naruto. The two were huffing like mad as they saw Kyoko smiling at them with a cocky grin on her face. Both glared at her before Naruto stood to his feet. He walked over to Samui and held out his hand. The blonde looked at it before grabbing it as Naruto pulled her to her feet. Thanks, she said while Naruto smiled. No problem, he responded as he saw the state of her being. 
She really looked a little worse for wear, and that was probably an understatement. The same could be said of Samui as she saw the cuts across Naruto's body. You look like you got sent through a shredder, Naruto told her while Samui looked down at her clothes. She slightly rolled her eyes at his statement while she pointed at him. You're not one to talk, she returned, and Naruto looked at his clothes. He really didn't look any better, and that made the blonde blush an embarrassment with a slight nod. I suppose you're right. Hey Kyoko Naruto paused when he saw that he and Samui were the only ones in the field. She must have left while they were talking. Samui saw they were alone also before Naruto narrowed his eyes. I hate it when she does that, Naruto said which caused Samui to shrug her shoulder in response. I'm sure she's got something to do. That's why she left, Samui said with a small sigh. Naruto noticed it and scratched his cheek. Are you alright? He asked and Samui looked at the forested areas. They would be her home soon. They'd be where she was training, spending practices and planning missions. They were so different from the mountainous Kumo. I'm fine. Well Naruto-san I'll see you later. Stay cool, she said walking off and Naruto could feel the lack of enthusiasm in her voice. He narrowed his eyes before he left the field also. Streets. Naruto walked the streets of Konoha as he was alone. His team had no missions due to his and Samui's training together. He'd have one tomorrow he knew that much for sure, but he also wondered how his friends would react when they found out that he was going to get married. That would be the shocker of a lifetime for them all. Now that he thought about, how would Samui react when she learned that he was a Jinchuriki? He'd rather not be rejected just for that. He could only hope that she wasn't like other people. Great, that's one thing in my head that I didn't need, Naruto thought to himself before he saw people running towards him. He squinted his eyes before he gulped. He saw all his friends charging at him, and the blonde was about to run before he was immediately caught in a shadow possession by Shikamaru. Traitor, Naruto yelled while Shikamaru rubbed the back of his head with a small sigh. Kiba grabbed Naruto's collar while he moved in front of his face. Is it true man? Are you really engaged to someone from Kumo? Kiba asked while Sasuke, Ino, Sakura, Chaoji and oddly enough Shino wanted to know also. Naruto rubbed the back of his head before he nodded, making everyone gasp as Kiba dropped Naruto to the ground. They all seemed surprised and shocked or at the very least confused. Why would Kumo do a political marriage to Naruto? Normally you do it to the last of the clan to help with restoration, Sakura said while Ino smacked her over the head, making the pink-haired girl growl. Damn it Ino Baka what was that for? She asked while Ino glared at her. Shut up forehead. If they want to do a political marriage to one of our sexiest shinobi, then why should they? Ino asked and Naruto raised an eyebrow while Sasuke sighed. Since the two were the ruling guys who had the most fangirls which was oddly enough even right down the middle. They were called by the girl the two sexiest male academy students. It was weird to try and get used to that, but it was the way things went. So you're tied to the ball and chain already huh? Chaoji asked while Naruto narrowed his eyes. He got to his feet and glared at the chubby shinobi, making everyone gulp underneath his gaze. Don't talk about Samui-chan that way ever again, Naruto told him, and Chaoji immediately nodded with a sorry. Naruto softened as he walked off with his hands in his pockets. Sensitive much? Sakura asked while Ino shrugged her shoulders. How would you feel if someone insult the person you were supposed to marry? The blonde asked and everyone nodded in agreement with her about that. No one wanted their future spouse, no matter who it was, to be insulted. So Sasuke can tell everyone how you defeated that ice user during our C-rank mission, Sakura said, and Sasuke closed his eyes. It was a C-rank mission to help a bridge builder. That ice user's name was Haku, and we fought an A-rank missing nin called Zabuza. Kakashi Sensei was able to match him while me and Kiba were able to work together to take down Haku. Sakura stood guard over the bridge builder. I think his name was Tazuna. They were able to finish the bridge, and so it was called the Great Wave Bridge. Kind of a weird name, but at least we completed our mission, Sasuke said to everyone, while Kiba grinned. If it wasn't for our teamwork that we got down during Kakashi Sensei's exercise, then we'd be dead. I thought Ichiha were supposed to be arrogant, but Sasuke and Makoto-san are the good ones, Kiba said, while Sasuke closed his eyes. I might be strong, but I can't take on everyone by myself. It's important to be realistic, Sasuke said while Sakura blushed. Then Sasuke-kun, how about a date? Sakura asked and Sasuke rolled his eyes before walking off. I just said it's important to be realistic, Sasuke said as he disappeared while Sakura pouted. Kiba chuckled at her before he walked off along with Shino, Chaoji and Shikamaru. Ino and Sakura were left alone in the streets, while the blonde turned to the pink Kanoichi. Wanna go see what Hinata's doing? Ino asked and Sakura shrugged her shoulders before walking off in the direction of the Hyuga compound. But Naruto. The blonde walked around the village for a bit as he rubbed the back of his head. He didn't mean to snap a Chaoji the way he did, but he'd rather not have people making fun of others without knowing them. It just irked him for some reason. 
maybe it's because of how his life was treated. As the blonde walked the streets of Kanoha, he soon heard Akaya as he paled. The blonde gulped as he turned around. He saw a multitude of fangirl with a banner and picture of Naruto in his shinobi attire, along with what he thought was Mikata wrapped around his neck. Naruto-sama. They all yelled while the blonde stepped back. Immediately the girls charged at the blonde cursed as he ran away. The civilians watched the chaos and while some didn't want to, they laughed at the blonde's misfortune. Guzo, who made fangirls anyway? Naruto wondered as he hopped to the rooftops. He huffed before he saw some of them hop up also. He cursed when he slightly forgot that he was also dealing with graduating Kinoichi from the academy. The blonde quickly jumped off the building and hit the streets again. Man they're persistent. How do I get out of here? Naruto wondered as he felt someone grab his arm as he was pulled into an alleyway. The blonde looked as the girls flew by and when they were gone he sighed in relief. Thanks I owe you, Naruto said as the person or rather people. He saw Amoy and Kari leaning against the walls. You can owe us by not marrying Samui, Kari said with a glare that Naruto noticed. He narrowed his eyes back at her glare, while Amoy rolled his eyes as he slightly pushed Kari out of the way. Sorry about her Naruto-san. She's just moody from time to time. She hates political marriages in general and not really the people involved, Amoy told him, and Naruto nodded, even if it was hesitant, while Samui stomped her foot on the ground. Why do things like this even exist? It's all a load of crap, Kari said more to herself than to them as Naruto got to his feet. Yeah I never thought I'd be in one, but Samui is really interesting. She acts cold, but she's really caring. I can tell from the way she fights. She was really able to back me up all the way, Naruto said while Kari and Amoy stared at him. That's Samui. She's always been like that since the first time we've met her. She's always had our back. We know that. Well I see nothing wrong with you Naruto-san, so I hope you make her happy, Amoy told him, and Naruto nodded with a small smile, while Kari rolled her eyes. Don't worry I'll do my best to make her happy, Naruto told them making Amoy nodded as he dragged Kari out of the alleyway. Naruto felt the alley also, but he did it with more caution as he looked left and right. He quickly stepped out and hopped to the rooftops back home to his mother's apartment. But Samui. Samui laid on her bed with her eyes closed as she contemplated everything. She wondered what marriage would be like. She'd seen plenty of couples in Kumo, and few of them were married. She even remembered getting unwanted advice on marriage which she didn't think that she'd need for a long time. Boy was she wrong. It'd be a lie if Samui said that she wasn't nervous about the whole thing. She was, but she could hide it pretty well. From what she saw, Naruto was an alright person. He could be cheery at one time and dead serious the next. He was interesting to her at the least. His fighting was superb in her opinion. He could cover all areas of combat from long range to close range. She could at least say that if she was going to be married, then Naruto was a nice choice. Soon there was a knock on her door which broke Samui from her observation of Naruto as she sat upright on the bed. Come in, she said, and immediately Kari and Amoy came through the door. They sat in a chair and leaned against the wall. In my opinion Samui, he's alright. I think he could lighten your cold mood, Amoy told her, and Samui casted a small glare at her teammate, making him shudder. Someone has to be the cool one in this group, she said while Carrie's eyebrow twitched as she rocked in her chair. What's that supposed to mean? She asked and Samui gave a small unnoticeable smile. I'm saying that you two are too hot-headed at times, so that's why I shouldn't be like that, the blonde responded, and Carrie growled while Amoy rubbed his head. He rummaged through his pockets and pulled out a lollipop. He let it settle in his mouth for a small while. Well I think he's alright. What about you Carrie? Amoy asked and the redeed scratched the back of her head. She looked away from their views while she gave her opinion. I still think this is stupid, but Amoy's right. He's something I guess. I don't have a real opinion even though he makes me irritated, Kerry said while Amoy rolled his eyes. You're always irritated it makes no difference who it is, Amoy said before Kerry punched him over the head. Samui sighed at her two teammates as she looked out the window at the village. She slowly sighed as she wondered what the future held for her. But Naruto. The blonde opened the door to the apartment and saw a note on the fridge door. He quickly took it down and looked at it. Naruto. Hey, Naruto-kun. I've got a mission with some of the other jonin, so I won't be back for some time, maybe about two day or three. Anko is probably the only one left behind. Stay safe for me. There are leftovers from last night's dinner inside. Heat it up and eat if you'd like. See you soon. Your mother, Kurina Yuhi. Naruto sighed as he opened the fridge. He took out a small glass and some milk. He poured it and quickly drank it. Naruto bit his thumb as he slammed the ground. Uchiyus no jutsu, Naruto yelled as there was a small poof. He saw a medium-sized black-colored python as it stood on its stomach. Hello, Naruto-sama. Is it that time already? The python asked and Naruto nodded. He unzipped his jacket and Mikata slithered out. She forked her tongue before turning around. 
I'll miss you Naruto-sama, Mikado told him. Naruto knelt down with a small smile and nod. He softly petted Mikado before he pulled back and watched her slither over to the python. Get ready girl. We're leaving, he said to her and Mikado nodded. She slithered to the seal and they both poofed out of sight in a reverse summon. As Naruto's familiar Mikado would need training back at the home for the snakes. She'd be gone for a good little while, but that was alright. Naruto knew he would miss her, but she was doing all this for his sake. Be careful Mikado-chan, Naruto said to himself as he stared at the open space. He sighed as he didn't really have anything to do for the moment. He then heard a knock at the door and quickly opened it. He saw Anko and Kyoko right behind the door. The blonde raised an eyebrow at their presence as he wondered what they wanted. Ayoko chan anko -ni, what are you guys doing here? Naruto asked and the two smiled. We're going to a special place. Come with us, they said, and before Naruto could say no, they dragged him out of the door and were sure to close it after they left. Wait, Ankoni, where are we going? Naruto asked as he was dragged back into the streets. Naruto had never been manhandled by women before. It was a weird experience for the blonde as they took him through a corner. We're heading to a nice little place. A place that the Raikage set up for us. Samui will there, Anko said while Naruto sighed. It felt like they were rushing this. The blonde figured he had enough time to get to know Samui, and it's not like he had to be with her every day. Who knows how these people thought. It was staggering to the blonde. Anko and Kyoko stopped in front of a door and knocked on it. The door immediately opened showing a small little cafe. Naruto tried to sneak away, but Kyoko grabbed him and set him down in a chair. He saw Samui across from the table while he sighed. I take it you were forced here also? Naruto asked and Samui closed her eyes with an irritated nod in agreement. The blonde rubbed the back of his head. Sorry about this. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable at all. We can go if you want, Naruto told her, and Samui shook her head. She placed her elbows on the table while she looked out the window. It's alright Naruto-san. In truth I did want to see you again. If only not in the same day since we spent all morning and early afternoon together. I know it's not your fault. I'm not used to relationships so this is a new experience for the both of us, Samui said, and Naruto could agree to that. He'd never been in any relationships due to his fangirls. So what are we supposed to do here? I mean the others left like so fast so what should we do? Naruto asked, and soon a cup was set in front of Samui. It appeared to be coffee, but the way she looked at it maybe it wasn't what she thought she'd expect. Something wrong with the coffee? He asked and Samui gently chuckled. It's not coffee. It's a special blend of ingredients. It's something that they have in Kumo. I'm surprised that they sell it here, Samui said taking a small sip while Naruto looked out the window. You really like Kumo don't you? He asked as Samui placed her cup down. She silently nodded and Naruto didn't have to see it to know that she did. Of course she loved it, why wouldn't she? So tell me Samui-chan do you have any dreams? Naruto asked her and Samui thought it over. She never really thought about her dreams before as she never really aspired for anything, except to be a strong shinobi for her village. I never had one. I'm still thinking it over. How about you? She asked and Naruto slightly pointed towards the Hokage stone faces. Samui looked at them and the blonde smiled. My dream is to protect everyone in this village as the first Jinjutsu master Hokage, Naruto said to her and Samui raised an eyebrow. It was an odd dream and that wasn't like normal people, but then again she could figure that Naruto wasn't normal. That's a nice dream for you to have. I can see why you would be like that, the blonde girl told the blonde boy, and Naruto thanked her for it. The two spent some time talking to each other, since they both didn't have anything better to do. It was nice to get to know the other, so there could be a sense of familiarity between them. As far as they knew they weren't strangers anymore, but friends was a bit of a wall they hadn't come to yet. So for now they were acquaintances. Samui got up from her seat finally and sighed. Well I'll see you later Naruto-san. It was nice talking to you, Samui told him and Naruto nodded. He got up and left also just as easy. Anko, Kyoko and Ace sighed as they closed their eyes. That could have gone better don't you think? Kyoko asked and Anko nodded in agreement. Well in any case they know each other. Let's give them some space for now before they both explode in front of us, I said making Anko and Kyoko agree. Well we've got a mission tomorrow so that works out well for us, Anko responded with a nicker, while Kyoko rolled her eyes. Well that's good for you, but I've got to be teaching brats about swords and the like. Sigh, I guess I'll head to the blacksmith to check out my sword. Damn that brat did a number on it, Kyoko said as she shunshined away along with Anko and A. Next morning. So what's the mission Hokage-sama? Anko asked and Siratobi pulled out a scroll. He handed it to them and they all looked at it. This is a mission from the land of iron, more precisely the place where samurai dwell nowadays, Siratobi said, and Naruto grinned. That'd be the chance to get some good medals and upgrade his Kadachi if he could. 
He'd heard that the people who made weapons there were on par with the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. Kyoko could attest to that as she said she'd been to the Land of Iron before. Inada and Shikamaru noticed the gleam in Naruto's eyes, and so did Anko as Siratobi continued. This mission is to retrieve medals from one of our suppliers. It's at least five to six days way. This material is important as it makes up the metal that Anbu use in their swords. If we lose this then we'll have to wait for another two months for that metal, Siratobi said, making Naruto's eyes shine even brighter, while Shikamaru rubbed the back of his head. You're too happy about this mission. How troublesome, Shikamaru said and Hinata could agree, but she didn't mind it so much as she liked that about Naruto. Alright Gaki it's time for us to go then. Let's head out in 10 minutes. That's enough for you to get any extra things, Anko told them, and everyone nodded as they left the room. Naruto hopped back home to go and fetch his Kodachi. He'd be lucky if he could find a blacksmith to fix his sword. He also remembered Samui's Tanto, along with Kari and Amoy swords. Maybe he'd be able to grab some metal for them also. He doubted they would reforge them, but it was worth anything to try and make them all happy. Naruto opened the door to his house and quickly walked into his room. He noticed something on his dresser and looked at it. It was another note from Kurinai. He wondered how he had never noticed that since last night. He quickly picked up the note and read it. Naruto. Here is your allowance son. Don't spend it all in one place. Kurinai. Naruto grinned as he took the money on his dresser and placed it in his wallet. It was a simple 3000 yen, but that was alright to him. He was just happy to be paid. Not that he didn't already have money. He still had another 10,000 yen from his mission a few days ago. He was also just happy that they weren't doing any D-ranks. They'd be switching sensei and teammates in a few more weeks so he'd meet someone new. All right now I can go, Naruto said to himself as he left the room. He also looked at the special shuriken he got from Sasuke on his birthday those years ago. It still made him smile, but he picked it up and brought it along also. Seeing that he had everything, Naruto left the room. He then realized that this would be his first mission without Mikado by his side. The blonde narrowed his eyes as he sighed. He really missed her already. The way she always slithered around his body was a memorable thing to the blonde. Come on Naruto. She'll be back. So just wait for that time, Naruto said as he left the apartment. He quickly met up with his team, and they all left the village without any problems. So Anko-sensei, is Anbu metal different from ours? Hinata asked, and the snake mistress chuckled as she turned around. She quickly took out a kunai and held it in front of Hinata. Yeah they are. Anbu are the village's elite so they need elite medals. All our kunai, shuriken and other supplies are the same, but Anbu get better materials for their clothes, armor and swords. Their swords are made of special chakra responders that lock to the Anbu's unique chakra signature. They are the only ones who have such a thing, but the land of iron is abundant in such things. The ports are usually closed off so we'll be walking there. We'll be lucky if we get any metal, Anko said while Shikamaru yawned. Please, with our luck we'll probably run into an S-rank missing nin this time. Just like that Kyoko-san. What a drag, Shikamaru said while Anko snaked her hand around Shikamaru's neck. No complaining Gaki. Now then let's head for the first rest point. Last one pays for everyone's dinner, Anko said as she shot off. Naruto ran after her while Hinata and Shikamaru sighed. They quickly ran after their sensei and teammate. Back in Konoha. Saratobi was currently doing his paperwork as usual before he heard the doorknob twist. He could feel the massive chakra signature behind the door and grinned as he saw A walk in. Had you been anyone else you'd be executed for barging in, Saratobi told him while A closed his eyes. He folded his arms while he glared at the old Hokage. I'm sure you would, but enough about that. I need to return to Kumo as I don't want to leave it alone for too long. I'd like to leave Samui, Amoy and Kari here for a little, while longer at least two more weeks then they can come back. Samui will participate in the Chunin exams in the coming months, as I'm sure Naruto-san will also, a said which made Siratobi nod in agreement. I understand, but why the sudden urge? Aren't things going well back in Kumo? Hiruzen wondered and A nodded. They are great and normal. It's just that Akage should never be away from their village for too long, A responded, and Siratobi could definitely agree with that. It wouldn't be wise for Akage to be gone or trouble would start to brew. Well I'll send some Anbu to escort you back. It's not wise to travel alone either. Take care, the Sandame said to the Yandame Raikage, as A left the room while Siratobi looked at the large stack of paperwork. Funny, I could have sworn that I had done more than that, Siratobi said to himself as he wondered if his paperwork was a living thing. It had to be or there was no logical explanation for it. Back with teammate. Shikamaru groaned as he looked at the bill to the lunch they just had. Anko and Naruto grinned while Hinata consoled the Nara. The pineapple-haired Jenin paid for the meal as they all left the place. Man that cleared me out. How nice is that? Shikamaru wondered while Anko took out a map. 
She looked at the place for a second before she narrowed her eyes. Everyone noticed the look of agitation on her face, while Lanko turned to them. Come on you guys. It turns out that the Land of Iron is hosting a sale all week. We'll have to hurry to get the metal or the supplier said he'd auction it off, and we can't allow that. Let's go now, Anko said as they couldn't take a leisurely stroll anymore. Everyone rushed through the trees as they hurried to the Land of Iron. They had to skip a couple of breaks, but that would be fine. But right now they just had to focus on getting there. The sun was soon going down and they would need to hurry. Anko sensei what happens if the metal is auctioned off? Shikamaru asked and the purple-haired Jonin narrowed her eyes. Then whoever wins it will get the metal and we will fail our mission. It's not our supplier's fault. It's a simple rule in the land of iron. During the special events you sell all of your high-quality items to all the people who are willing to pay for them. If we don't collect our things now then we'll have to wait for another two months to get supplies, and knowing how the Anbu are with missions, then you can see the weight of it all can't you? Anko asked making Naruto, Shikamaru and Hinata nod. How did you know that they were holding a sale? Naruto asked and Anko pulled out a book. She gave it to Naruto and the blonde took it. Hinata and Shikamaru closed in next to him with the former giving a small blush, but wanted to see also. They looked at a land of iron book that told about specific dates and events that would be happening from now into two years. Wow where did you get this book? Naruto asked her, and Anko pointed back in the direction of their village. It was being sold at a local bookstore so I bought it. Now you see why we have to hurry. We really chose the worst time to get this mission, Anko said, making the others nod. Um will we be meeting other shinobi also? Hinata asked and Anko nodded making the others raise their eyebrows. It's only a C-rank because it's classified as a simple retrieval, but the odds of meeting other shinobi is quite high. Land of Iron makes a lot of precious metals. There will be bandits, thieves, and other nation shinobi. Are you all scared? Anko asked making Naruto shake his head. Shikamaru rubbed the back of his head, but didn't say anything. Hinata slightly quivered, but she wasn't scared either. Anko grinned like mad as they all ran towards their checkpoint. Alright that's good. Just one word of advice. Avoid eye contact with anyone you find suspicious. People will not hesitate to pick a fight with you, Anko told them making the team gulp, but then Naruto said something to help them. That goes double for you Anko ni, Naruto told her and making Shikamaru grin, while Hinata snickered. Anko's eyebrow twitched as she turned to her brother. What are you talking about? Anko asked and Naruto rolled his eyes at his faking sister. You know exactly what I'm talking about. That last person who looked at you funny ended up in the hospital for a week. So maybe you should take your own advice, Naruto told her while Anko gasped. He got you there sensei. The entire village knew about that incident, Shikamaru told her, and Anko scratched the back of her head in embarrassment. Bad guys had it coming to him. Now stop lagging behind and hurry up, Anko said, and everyone agreed as they shot for the location. Back in Konoha, three days later. Gurunai sighed as she exited the Hokage mansion. It felt good to complete a mission, but she was rather sad that Naruto was gone on a mission of his own. She couldn't wait to have seen him, but then she'd have to wait a little longer. I wonder what I should do now, Kurinai said to herself before she heard a voice from next to her. Excuse me, you're Kurinai Yuhi-san aren't you? Someone asked her and she turned to see Sam Yui looked at her. Kurinai instantly recognized her. How could she not? This was her son's fiancé and her soon-to-be daughter-in-law. Whoa, that sounded so strange. Kurinai snapped out of her thoughts before addressing the blonde Kumo Genin. Yes that's right. How may I help you Sam Yui-san? Kurinai asked with a small smile, and the genin glared with the cold gaze that she always had before answering. Well I'd like to ask you about your son, Naruto Uzumaki-san if that's alright. May I? She asked and Kurinai raised an eyebrow before nodding, and the two walked off to a private place. It turned out to be the corner of a small restaurant. Alright so what did you want to ask me? Kurinai asked and Samui didn't waste any time. If there was one thing that Kurinai observed about Samui, it was that she could be too serious about things. Maybe that was her nature Kurinai figured. Um it's about Naruto-san habits or rather his stamina. When we were training together at one point I could feel a large spike in his chakra, and then there is his healing abilities. Is he a Jinchuriki? Samui asked and Kurinai mentally tensed, and Samui seemed to notice it. Don't misunderstand what I'm asking. I don't hate him or anything. Kumo has two Jinchuriki and I'm close to them both. They're Yujito-san and B-sensei. I was just asking because the level of chakra that I think he has is a match for theirs, Samui said, and Kurinai nodded. That could make sense, and the Jinjutsu mistress sighed while she lightly tapped the table in front of her. Well I understand the curiosity Samui-san, can you tell me why you didn't simply ask Naruto-kun this? Kurinai asked her and Samui wavered for a second. She slightly rubbed the back of her head. Well we don't really know each other. I mean I have hung out with him for a while, and we talked for a bit. 
I think that Raikage-sama and Hokage-sama were trying to get us at a comfortable level around each other. I feel a certain level of comfort, but it wasn't enough for me to want to ask him that question. I didn't want him to think that I was prying so I didn't ask him, Samui answered and Kur and I lightly chuckled making Samui confused. Well it's not really my place to tell you as you'll just have to ask Naruto-kun about it. Trust me when he's not offended by much. If you want to know something about him then he'll tell you. He's just like that. I'm sure there are things about your life he'd like to know also, but doesn't want to pry. Just ask him and trust me that he will answer you when he's ready, Kurinai told her and Samui, and the blonde girl nodded as she got to her feet. Thank you Kurinai-san. You have an interesting son. I look forward to getting to know him and you some more, Samui said, and she headed for the door of the restaurant, leaving a smiling Kurinai behind. But teammate, three days later. Land of Iron. Anko presented her passport and shinobi license as did Naruto, Hinata and Shikamaru. The four had quickly entered the Land of Iron country and were just in time also. Am it's cold. Why is it snowing? Shikamaru asked and Anko chuckled at him. Come on Shika. Try and toughen up, Anko said to him while the Nara glared at her, but didn't say anything. Thank you and enjoy the events going on, a man said, making the four nod as they entered. They were in a small city with an industrial feel to it. Granted there was snow all around, but that didn't matter. It was different than the elemental nations, but that was the land of iron they figured. Naruto looked around and saw plenty of people around. Just like Anko said, there were bandits, missing Nin, and shinobi from other countries. Um Anko sensei, why are shinobi allowed here? I heard that the land of iron doesn't accept the four great nations, Hinata told her, and Anko nodded. That's right, but we're given special permission from time to time. All the nations are. The land of iron is neutral to us all. Its leader is called Mifune. He's in charge. They've never participated in any of the ninja wars so they're neutral and might remain so. Just don't piss anyone off and you'll be fine, she told them while Shikamaru shivered. Alright sensei, where is our supplier? Shikamaru asked trying to warm himself up, and Anko pulled out a map. She pointed to one spot, and they all quickly walked making sure not to have too much eye contact with any one person. Business is booming even in this cold huh? Naruto asked and Anko nodded with a grin as they approached a shop. It was where their supplier was and it turns out that they were just in time too as they heard someone yell. Hand over that metal. No one's coming so it's their loss if they don't take it now had it over, a big man with a long sword on his back said to the supplier. I'm sorry sir, but you're going to have to wait 10 more minutes, and if the Kanoha Shinobi don't take it then it is yours, but I will wait until those 10 minutes are up, down to the last second, he said, and the big man grumbled with a small nod as he folded his arms. Well you don't have to wait anymore as we are here. Sorry to keep you waiting, Anko said, and the man turned to see the four people at the door. Kanoha I presume? He asked and Anko nodded with a small gleam in her eye, while the man widened his own eyes. Anko, Naruto, Shikamaru and Hinata came forward. Papers please, the man said, and Anko handed the man some papers from Kanoha that listed the registration number for Kanoha's order. Ah thank you for you for your services. Do you have the money? The man asked and Anko nodded, but then the larger man slammed the counter. What the hell is this? They can't just walk in here and take all that metal. Are you fucking with me? The man asked while Naruto leaned close to Shikamaru. Not like any woman would in his life, Naruto whispered making Shikamaru stifle a laugh. Well Anko carried the materials and easily the Kanoha shinobi were about to walk out before the man blocked their path. Don't even think about leaving here with that metal. Hand it over before I kill you, he said as he took out his sword. Anko narrowed her eyes while Hinata and Shikamaru backed away. Naruto glared at him while Anko bowled her fists. Move it tubby. Anko yelled and the man glared at her. I love a chick who doesn't know how to bite her tongue, the man said, and Naruto narrowed his eyes. His hair covered his eyes as he went through his hand signs. Hinata, Shikamaru and Anko noticed the chakra spike, while Naruto walked past Anko and glared at the man. Anko ni looks like we're going to be having some trouble, Naruto said as he slammed the ground. Ninpo. Shin no Itashi ana, Naruto yelled as the ground shook. Immediately the man backed away from the pitfall in front of him, as Naruto went through some more hand signs. Pain. Hikayu no Jutsu fire release. Phoenix fireball jutsu, Naruto yelled as he sent the fire towards the man knocking him out the shop and into an adjacent building making it explode, drawing people's attention. The man screamed as people say his burnt body. Teammate exited the shop while Naruto saw everyone looking at them. So much for that plan, Anko said to herself while the store owner came out. Young man that was amazing. Have you ever considered doing the Land of Irons tournament? It's filled with prizes and the like. The medal you have there is something that's also being presented. It's enough for a year's supply, the man said, and Anko widened her eyes. She grinned like mad and so did Naruto. Shikamaru sighed as he rubbed the back of his head. 
Are you sure we can enter? Naruto asked. The man nodded with a smile. That's right. Anyone can enter and they all get to stay in a hotel with all expenses paid. It'll be the amazing point to end our event. I'd like it if you stayed, the man said, and Naruto turned to Anko. The snake mistress placed a hand on her hip and tapped her finger under her chin. Troublesome, but I say Naruto goes for it. It might be fun for him to let loose, Shikamaru said and Hinata agreed. Anko smirked with a nod. All right Naruto go and enter, but if you don't win. I'll come get you, Anko told him and Naruto gulped, but he nodded and ran off to go sign up for the tournament. Um Anko-sensei, just how are we to get this to Hokage-sama? Hinata asked and the purple-haired Jonin bit her thumb. Immediately she summoned a snake and it slithered towards her. How might I help you Anko-sama? The snake asked and she handed the bag of metal towards the snake. Please give this to Hokage-sama for us along with this note. Thank you, Anko said making the snake nod as it dispelled out of sight. Shikamaru and Hinata nodded with that method of choice. Alright, now that our mission is done shall we go watch? Anko asked and the two nodded while Naruto came back. They said that the tournament is tomorrow so we'll have to wait, but I signed up along with Anko Ni, Naruto said, making Anko gasped. Would you sign me up? She asked and the blonde rubbed the back of his head with a small smile. Well I figured if you were in it then would double our chances of winning. You like those odds don't you? Plus your wicked strong Anko Ni, Naruto complimented and Anko blushed. Well that is true. Alright I'll fight. I don't see the point, but okay, she said while Naruto turned to Shikamaru and Hinata. Are you two going to join? Naruto asked and they shook their heads fast at his question. For them, they'd feel better if they didn't get involved unless they had to, and if this tournament went wrong, then plenty of fighting would be going on. And no, Naruto-kun. I, I think I'll observe the fights, Hinata said, and Shikamaru nodded in the same respect. I agree. I don't want to work if I don't have to. Good luck to you both, Shikamaru said rubbing the back of his head. Anko and Naruto nodded before the later came up to the shop owner. Tell me do you know where a blacksmith is? Naruto asked him and the man pointed to himself. Why young lad I'm a blacksmith. One of the best in the land of iron. How can I help you? He asked and Naruto took out his two kadachi. Can you repair and upgrade these? I'll pay any cost you want, Naruto said while the man looked over the two swords. Anko, Shikamaru and Hinata watched the interaction between them while the man took out a glass eye and looked it over. This is quite a nice metal. It's very sturdy and very exquisite. A little scratched up, but fine. I can repair this. As for upgrades what would you like? He asked and Naruto placed a finger to his chin. He closed his eyes for a second before he wanted to respond. Well can you come up with something interesting? Naruto asked and the man nodded. I'll tell you what. If you or your friend there win the tournament then this will be free if not then you pay. How about that? He asked and Naruto's eyes gleamed. You got it Oji-san, Naruto said to him as the two shook hands. Naruto then rummaged through his pockets and pulled out some of the metal that they just got from the supplier. Anko ni, we still have some metal left over, Naruto told her, and Anko looked it over. She saw it was a fairly medium-sized piece. Nothing that would make a difference to the other types that she sent. Use it then. It's nothing serious, Anko told him, and Naruto gave it to the old man. Please upgrade my swords using this metal if you can, Naruto told him and the old blacksmith smirked as he rubbed his two hands together. Understood sir, he said while Naruto and the others left, but then the blonde turned around. Hey can you tell me your name? Naruto asked him and the man pointed to himself. My name is Muramasa young one. Who are you? He asked and Naruto gave a thumbs up. I'm Naruto Yuhi Uzumaki. The next Hokage of Konoha, Naruto said his teammate left the shop. The man chuckled to himself as he walked over to a picture. There was a boy in his teens with a sword on his back. He was more or less glaring with a serious face while Muramasa chuckled. If only you could be as lively as him then you'd be great ninja, Muramasa said before he rolled up his sleeves and began to work over Naruto's kadachi before he saw someone else open the door. The person was obviously female, but she had a hood over her head. She had violet hair as she wore a small kimono dress. She wore some high-heeled boots while she came inside. The day Muramasa-san. How are you today? The girl asked. She was about Naruto's age maybe a year younger. Ah well I haven't seen you in a while. I've been well. It's good to see you also, Muramasa said the girl took a glance at the kadachi. You a collector of short blades now? She asked while Muramasa held up Naruto's swords as he gave a chuckle. No, I'm not. Just met the most interesting young man. He likes these blades like you. He's entering the tournament here in the land of iron, Muramasa told her, while the hooded girl gave a small smile. I see well that nice. Maybe I'll enter just to see what he's like. Also Ryusama sent you this, she said handing him a scroll. Muramasa took the scroll and smiled. Ah well thank you. Do you want some blacksmithing done also? 
He asked and the girl placed her kadachi on the counter. Please and thank you. Now to see who this person is that has got you so interested. What's his name? She asked and Muramasa gave an elderly laugh. His name is Naruto Yuhi Uzumaki. You should watch him closely. He's good, Muramasa said while the violent girl stepped out of the shop. I noticed a bit. Well hope you watch as I'll be winning that tournament, she said, leaving in a swift manner. Muramasa chuckled at her while he placed her kadachi next to Naruto's. Looks like I'll have to hope that those two fight. It'll be quite interesting to see who wins, Muramasa said to himself before he got back to work. Okage Mansion. Saratobi was finished with his work before a poof came on his table. He looked to see a medium-sized snake on his desk with a scroll. Greetings Hokage-sama. This is from Anko-sama. Bye-bye, the snake said as it disappeared. Saratobi looked at the scroll and unsealed it. Immediately precious metal from the land of iron fell to the ground and he gasped when a note fell to the floor with it. He raised an eyebrow before he quickly picked up. Hokage-sama. Anko here Hokage-sama. We've sent you the medal that was for our mission. We'd be on our way back, but Naruto, as we know him, entered a tournament, and the prize is a year's supply of this same medal as well as some other things. We'll be back soon just to let you know. Please forward the money and success of the mission to our accounts. Please and thank you. Snake Mistress, Anko Midarashi. Saratobi stopped as he looked over the note. He sighed as he shook his head at what Naruto did, but still a year's supply of this medal. It would last Konoha for a long time. Also this was fine as long as they all obeyed the Land of Iron's rules. Saratobi could only wonder if Mifune would do something stupid. Sigh I guess I'll give them their pay. I just hope that Naruto doesn't act too reckless, Saratobi said to himself as he started another form on Anko's team and their success. Okage Gates. I Raikage Sama. We'll see you soon, Kerry said with a smile and the Raikage patted her on the head. He was about to leave with two Anbu that the Hokage assigned to him. I understand. Behave yourselves and you'll be fine. Be safe and continue on in Kanoha for another two weeks. Once those are over you can come home. I'll see you soon, I said to them making Samui, Amoy and Kerry nod. They all watched him leave while Samui turned around. Samui, where are you going? Amoy asked her and the blonde looked up at the sky. I'm going to find Kyoko-san and get some more training in for today. See you later, Samui told them as she ran off leaving Amoy and Kerry near the gates. Wanna follow her? Kerry asked while Amoy rubbed the back of his head. Sure, why not, he said as they quickly followed their blonde friend. Land of Iron, Hotel Room. Naruto and Shikamaru stayed in one room while Hinata and Anko stayed in the other. The two boys sighed as Shikamaru shivered some more. I can't believe they're having a tournament in this place. Damn it's cold, Shikamaru said, and Naruto chuckled at his Nara friend. If you keep saying you're cold then you will be cold. Just stop moving and go to sleep. It's easy isn't it? Naruto asked and he yawned. Shikamaru sighed as he got in the bed. So you're going to win the tournament? Shikamaru asked and Naruto nodded with a small grin on his face. Of course. I'll get a free upgrade. Samui, Kerui and Amoy might even upgrade theirs. I hope they'll be happy, Naruto said while Shikamaru looked at his friend with a smirk. Seems like someone is starting to like the blondie from Kumo, Shikamaru said while Naruto blushed as he turned on his side of the bed. Shut up and got to sleep, the blonde genin said, while Shikamaru turned on his side and closed his eyes. Naruto did the same as he couldn't wait to have some fun tomorrow. Little did he or anyone else know how chaotic the tournament would soon become. Morning. Naruto opened his eyes and yawned himself awake. He looked out the window and he noticed that it was still snowing. He sighed before jumping out of bed. Due to the snow and cold, Naruto had no idea what time it was, though he could figure that out later. Right now he had a tournament to win. The blonde took a quick shower and got dressed in a red shirt, black pants and black jacket. He turned to see Shikamaru still sleeping and sighed. Come on Shikamaru. Time to get up. If you don't wake up on your own then Ankoni will do it and you know how much of a drag that will be, Naruto told him, and almost immediately Shikamaru lazily rose his body and scratched the back of his head with an annoyed sigh. Alright I'm up. Is it even morning yet? Shikamaru asked and Naruto shrugged his shoulders since he didn't know. Shikamaru cursed under his breath before the two boys heard a knock on their door. The knob twisted and to their surprise Anko and Hinata showed up. Good morning Gaki. Time to wake up, Anko told them while Shikamaru hopped to his feet while Naruto packed his pouches. So what time's the tournament Anko ni? Naruto asked and Anko pulled out a small pamphlet that was in her pocket. She opened it for a little while and then just as easily closed it. It starts immediately at 12 in the afternoon. We till have about 3 hours before the thing starts, so let's get going so we can have some breakfast. It'll also be the perfect chance to get you all into some good chakra exercises, Anko said while Shikamaru went into the shower to wash up. Well that's good. I can't wait to have some fun. 
Just imagine all those prizes, Naruto said while Anko shook her head at him. W well good luck Naruto-kun, Hinata told him and the blonde smiled with a nod. Well let's get some breakfast and then we'll get started. Shikamaru can catch up to us, Anko said to them, and everyone nodded as they left. Breakfast was rather uneventful, but it was nice. The entire team had sat in silence while they ate their food, but it was also nerve-wracking. So many people were inside the hotel room that it was ridiculous still it gave Naruto the chance to scope out his competition. He saw a lot of people there, but he was actually interested in one of them who was sitting in a corner. It was obviously female as she wore hit her face with the hood over her head. She ate in relative silence before she quickly got up and left the scene. Naruto could only wonder if she was in the tournament also, but he could dwell on that later. Somewhere outside. Everyone was at the base of a small mountain, while Anko threw a kunai up to the top of it. Alright guys this is tougher than tree walking so try and get up there. The ice is very slippery, so you'll need more refined chakra to give up there, or else you'll slip and land in a pile of cold show, Anko told them, and everyone sighed. They looked at the tall mountain while Naruto stepped forward. I guess I'll go first unless you both want to try it. Naruto asked them and Shikamaru shook his head, while Hinata insisted that the blonde go first. Taking that suggestion, Naruto quickly got to the mountain bases and walked up it. He quickly started to run up the mountain, while Hinata and Shikamaru watched him go up further before they heard Anko chuckle. This could be good. Naruto walked up even further before he quickly slipped and shifted his balance. The blonde gasped as he lost all sense of balance in his feet. Seeing no other option, Naruto quickly backflipped and skidded into the snow before looking up the mountain. Great, it really is slippery. A lot more than I actually thought it was. It'll be tough to get up that thing, Naruto said while Shikamaru held his head down. Not what I wanted to hear, but fine. I guess it's my turn, the Nara said as he put his hands in his pockets. He put one foot to the mountain and started to walk up it, and only a few moments after did he come falling down into the snow, making Shikamaru shiver from the cold. Anada didn't have a better time either as she fell into the snow either, but Naruto could tell that she had doubted her abilities that time. Hinata's chakra control, in order to use the Jayuikin, had to quite efficient. Naruto could honestly say that she had just as good chakra control like him, but due to her nature she fell down quite a few times. This entire practice continued for a good majority of an hour and a half. They still had another hour and a half to spend before they had to be at the tournament. Alright that was good. You are all covered in mountain of snow haha, <laughs> Anko said while everyone settled for glaring at her, but didn't say anything, since they were too busy having to keep their teeth from chattering. Now then the best way to get you to keep form getting cold is to have a good old-fashioned spar. All three of you against me. How about it? Anko asked, but she didn't need a reply as Naruto threw a kunai at her. She quickly dodged it before Shikamaru threw a shuriken at her also. Anko sidestepped it and held her hands up. I didn't say we could start yet, Anko told them before she saw the madness in everyone's eyes. The snake mistress carefully backed away while Naruto got to his feet. You want sparring Ankoni? Then you'll get it, he said as he crossed his fingers. Age bunch and no jutsu, Naruto yelled making three clones. Shikamaru took out six kunai strapped to some wire, while Hinata went through her family's hand signs. Ayakugan, she yelled while Anko gulped. She held up her hands up again in defense and sweat dropped. Okay they are all pissed off. Badly. I only hope I live to see you again Nai-chan, Anko said mentally as her team charged at her with rage in their eyes. Back in the town. Come on are you all still mad at me? Anko asked while everyone stayed silent making the snake Mr. Sai. Oh come on. It was all in the interest of training. Besides you'll see results from extreme conditions like this, Anko said while everyone turned to her. Shikamaru and Hinata whispered in Naruto's ears. The blonde nodded and turned to Anko. We want you to treat us to dinner, Naruto said making the two nod, while Anko narrowed her eyes at them all. Are you negotiating with me? She asked and they nodded while the purple-haired Anbu growled underneath her breath about ungrateful students, but she nodded making the three of them smile at her. All right now that that's settled we can head to the arena. Let's go Ankoni. Be sure to watch us from the stands you guys, Naruto said as he dragged Anko off leaving Shikamaru and Hinata alone. He's not going to hold out you know, the Nara said while the Hayuga era slightly giggled. Yeah, but that's just like Naruto-kun don't you think? She asked and Shikamaru could agree with that as they walked off towards the arena. Back in Konoha. Samui, Kari and Amoy walked the streets of Konoha and simply looked around the village. They were still learning a lot about the place, and they all settled real nice with it. Getting used to the hot temperature here, Amoy said while Kari rubbed her head with a small sigh. I don't want to used to it. Not much has been going around. We're not Konoha shinobi so we don't really have any missions. Sigh, where is that blonde idiot? Kerry asked while Amoy snickered. Maybe he has a mission. Are you missing him? 
Amoy asked while Carrie rolled her eyes, while Samui seemed interested to know also. Ami no I'm not. It's just at least I can start an argument with a guy. I'll at least say that he's interesting. Nothing like Samui though, Carrie answered making the blonde Jenin turn around. Are you saying that I'm not interesting? She asked and Carrie widened her eyes before holding her hands up in defense. And no Carrie I'm just making a comparison, Carrie replied fast while Samui rolled her eyes. She looked at them both before looking forward. Also Carrie, just so you know, Naruto is very strong. I can tell from the way he teamed up with me. He's definitely the real deal, Samui told them making Amoy widen his eyes. You've never come to the aid of someone before. Are you seriously starting to like this guy? Amoy asked while Samui closed her eyes. Kerui and Amoy waited for her response while Samui turned around. I wouldn't go that far. Let's just say that I've come to respect him a little more now, Samui said as she walked off as Kerui and Amoy glanced at each other. She's really falling for him. How do you like that? Amoy asked while Kerui threw her hands up in the air. Oh what do I care anymore? I don't know why the hell I worry over her, Kerry said while Amoy turned to her and chuckled. I'm sure Sin knows that you mean well, but you have to admit that you've been rather mean to Naruto ever since we've arrived. Maybe you should try being nice to him. Samui doesn't seem to mind the marriage anymore, Amoy told Kerry, and the Ritid nodded. Yeah, you're right. I still don't like it, but I guess I could stand to be nicer, even if I don't think he's right for her, Kerry said while Amoy walked forward. HMPH keep that up and people will think you like her, Amoy said before Carrie slammed him into the ground with her fist. Don't you dare think that way ever again. Carrie told him before Amoy picked himself up from the ground. Violent as ever huh? He asked while Carrie fumed her aggression before looking to see Samui watching them. You two are too hot-headed for me. I wonder how I got along with you for so long, she said while Carrie rolled her eyes. Please we've been together since before the academy. You know you like having us around, Carrie returned, while Samui placed a hand on her hip like she was thinking over those words. Well like I said, someone has to be the mature one in this group, Samui said before they saw people walking towards them as they talked with each other. I'm telling you I can't believe Naruto's getting married. He's such a lucky dog, a boy with a dog on his head said to a pink-haired girl and a brunette-looking boy. Amoy, Carrie and Samui raised their eyebrows while the pink-haired girl snickered. It was Sasuke, Kiba and Sakura if Samui remembered right. Are you kidding? To think this girl actually agreed to marry him sounds ridiculous. She must have poor taste in men, Sakura said making Kiba and Sasuke sigh. She still hadn't changed that mindset. Will you ever get off your high horse Sakura? Damn it's no wonder Hinata beat you as the top Kanoichi, Kiba said while Sakura fumed, but Sasuke gave a small chuckle at Kiba. Well I'm sure surprised. Naruto always was unpredictable, Sasuke said as they saw the Kumo Genin in front of them. Hey you're the group that recently came to Kumo, Sakura said while Samui nodded before lightly glaring at Sakura, making the girl flinch. That's right and I heard what you said about me. I don't like people talk about my preferences and such. Who I like is none of your business, Samui said while Sakura widened her eyes before she gulped. You're the one that Naruto's marrying? Kiba asked and Samui nodded while Kari and Amoy came to her sides. And who are you? Kari asked the group and Sasuke stepped forward. We're Team 7 of Konoha. I'm Sasuke Ichiha, this is Kiba Inuzuka, and that's Sakura Haruno. You'll have to ignore Sakura. She tends to never close her mouth at times, Sasuke said while Sakura pouted at her teammate. Sasuke-kun I'm sorry, Sakura said to him while the Ichiha rolled his eyes. He pointed to Samui and Sakura looked up. I'm not the one you should be apologizing to, the Ichiha quickly said, and Sakura turned to Samui. I'm sorry for what I said, Sakura apologized to the blonde Kumo Jen in making Samui nod. Still I can't believe that Naruto's getting married to someone so cute, Kiba said making Samui sigh. Carrie's forehead grew a tick mark as she grabbed Kiba's collar. Where are you looking you perv? Carrie asked and Kiba rubbed the back of his head. Nowhere, just making an observation, the Inuzuka said while Sasuke rubbed the bridge of his nose. Perry let him down. We have training to do anyway, Samui told her and Carrie agreed. She let Kiba down, and the three walked off while Kiba rubbed his head. I guess we made a bad impression, Kiba said while Sasuke rolled his eyes. You two made a bad impression. I didn't do anything. Now I'm going home. Ka-san said that there was something she watched to teach me. I'll see you tomorrow, Sasuke told them both and walked off. Sakura gave a depressed sigh while Kiba walked off. See you later loudmouth, Kiba said to her, while Sakura fumed before she realized that she was the only one left still in the streets. Back in the land of iron. Dozens of people were gathering. They were all looking forward to the tournament that was going to go down. It was their country's annual event after all, so how could they not enjoy this? 
the stadium was filled with people left and right from all the nations who had time to come or who were allowed to. Naruto noticed Shikamaru and Hinata sitting in one part of the audience right next to the man, Muramasa that Naruto had met a few yesterday. The blonde was also looking for that girl that he had seen a few hours ago, but he couldn't find her. Someone caught your eye? Anko asked and Naruto chuckled but shook his head. He then turned to see that there were some type of heaters near the stadium. Must have been to keep people warm in the cold weather. No nobody in particular, he finally answered before everyone saw what they thought to be the leader of the Land of Iron appear. Anko immediately knew the man. His was called Mifun. The leader of Iron and one of its most powerful samurai. Greeting my people, we are here to showcase our annual Land of Iron tournament. I can see that we have some shinobi from the five great nations. I welcome all competitors. Our tournament is a way of giving thanks for our amazing festival. I hope to watch everyone and see how you all do. Now then I will explain the rules for this tournament. First rule, since the land of iron is the land of the samurai, then weapons must be used by all people, Mifune said to them, and everyone narrowed their eyes. Naruto grinned and people nodded as the man continued. Second rule and this is for shinobi, no ninjutsu is allowed, he yelled, and everyone widened their eyes. Some people called it unfair, but Naruto and Anko knew why. Ninjutsu was a shinobi's trump card and it would be unfair to the samurai, but Naruto's eyes gleamed. He never said anything about Jinjutsu, and while Naruto wanted to be all-rounded, he still preferred his mother's Jinjutsu to anything else. The match is decided by three things for each person. It's decided by the loser giving up, falling out of the ring, or death. These are the only ways. Now then the people will be randomly selected, so everyone wait in that area for your name to be announced. In the room will be weapons that have been provided to you, Mifune said before he snapped his finger. Soon two shinobi came to his side and did their hand signs. They slammed the ground, and a large dome appeared over the arena keeping everyone out of the cold. Ah finally. I thought I was gonna freeze to death, Shikamaru said making Hinata giggle. With Naruto and Anko. The two were currently in the room trying to pick out their weapons. Anko sighed as she saw all the weapons, but didn't really have a preference. So what are you going to use Anko ni? Naruto asked, and the jonin shrugged before she left and sat down in a chair and placed her head in her on with her elbow on the table. Nothing I'll just stick to using my kunai. I'm more adept with those anyway. You pick, Anko told him and Naruto nodded. He looked around at the multiple staffs, swords, and many other weird weapons that his eyes saw. It was then that he laid his eyes on two short blades and smiled as he reached for them. Soon his hand collided with another, and the blonde raised an eyebrow. He turned to see the hooded girl that he had seen back in the hotel. Oh so you like the Kadachi also huh? Naruto asked and she remained silent for a bit before smiling underneath her hood. They are good for fast movement. Looks like we have some similar tastes I guess, she said, and Naruto could agree with that. He moved his from hers and she did the same. Well you can use them. I'll go find something else, Naruto said while she grabbed the blades. You do know that by handing your enemy their favorite weapon, it will only be harder for you to win right? She asked and Naruto waved her off. Please I'll still win anyway. Besides, letting you have the weapons you're good at will make it more challenging for me. I might not even meet you in the finals, Naruto said, and the girl narrowed her eyes. How do you know we won't fight each other before that? She asked and Naruto shrugged his shoulders. I just know. See you later, he waved while she turned around. He's interesting, she said before her figure vanished in the crowd of competitors. Naruto sighed as he looked around the room. He didn't see any more Kadachi, and the blonde cursed his luck of being nice to people, even if they were his enemies. He sat down with a sigh before he widened his eyes. Oh I do have those things, Naruto said as he went into his pouch. Anko watched him pull out a scroll and unfurl it. He quickly unsealed the things inside as they fell to the ground. Naruto picked them up and smiled. He picked up the shuriken he got from Sasuke for his birthday a few years ago, and, well he never thought he would need these, a short sword that he received from Kakashi for his 11th birthday. I guess these will do. They're not Kadachi, but they'll be good nonetheless, Naruto said to himself with a small nod before someone one called for two competitors. Everyone walked outside to see the fight which happened to be between a medium-sized man with a sword and a large man wielding a club. Will I get a small fry huh? He asked while the smaller man sized. Size doesn't matter. All I need is the will to win, and you will be defeated, he said making the other irate before they began to fight. Naruto could say that it was interesting. In the end, the smaller man was right, and the large guy stood no chance against him. He was too slow and the man was too agile. He didn't even need to strike until later in the match, which required only one cut of his sword to bring the guy with the club to his knees. I'll have to watch out for him, Naruto said to himself while Anko folded her arms and watched the matches with interest. It was getting to mid-afternoon, and around ten more people had gone before it was someone else's turn. 
Naruto Yuhi Uzumaki vs Higen Yashi, an announcer said, and Naruto got to his feet. He grinned like mad while Anko wished him luck in his fight. He turned to the hooded girl who was looking at him. She nodded while Naruto hit the field. Shikamaru and Hinata smiled as they watched their teammate enter the field. Naruto also watched his opponent enter the field also. He had a medium-sized build and carried a long staff. He walked to the field and bowed to the blonde. I sense that you are a good young man. I won't let my guard down, he said, and Naruto bowed in turn. I hope to have some fun with you Dadabeo, Naruto said as Mifune yelled. Begin. And with those words Anko, the violet girl, Hinata and Shikamaru watched the match as Naruto threw a kunai at him. Higen quickly parried it with his staff knocking it over the edge of the platform. Nice aim, but futile, he said as he jumped in the air. Naruto cursed as he backflipped away just in time to avoid a staff strike that slammed the ground. The blonde cursed as he crossed his fingers, but stopped. Am no ninjutsu, he growled as he stopped. He quickly pulled out his sword and charged at Higen. The man twirled his staff in his hands as he blocked Naruto's strike. The blonde growled at the man before he was targeted for a kick. Naruto jumped in the air to avoid the kick until he saw the Higen's staff overhead. You still have a lot to learn young one, he said as he slammed Naruto across the face. Naruto was sent flying across the field before he rebounded and rubbed the side of his cheek. It stung from the hit, but he'd have to deal with it. Alright then I'll try something else then, Naruto said as he pulled out his shuriken from his back. Higen looked at it with a confused expression on his face. He had faced plenty of shinobi before, but the young ones always had a trick up their sleeves. If you think you can beat me with it then I'd suggest that you think of something else, he said before Naruto threw the shuriken. He gave an ear-splitting smile as the man effortlessly dodged the kunai. Higen narrowed his eyes as he saw a piece of war before turning to Naruto. The blonde in question threw a kunai at Higen, and he parried that shot with his staff, as Naruto smiled. Watch out for the falling fire, Naruto told him as he took out a burst tag. He placed it on the wire, and immediately the tag exploded sending a trail of fire along the wires. Higen widened his eyes and saw the flames travel around him. He backed up close to the edge and narrowed his eyes. Very resourceful Naruto-san, but it's not enough, he as he jumped into the air. He twirled his staff around his body, and the wind picked up around him dispelling the flames as he landed on the ground. Try harder, he said as he looked up. He gasped when he saw Naruto gone from his view. Okay I'll try harder then, Naruto said as his voice echoed throughout the stadium. Higen looked around for the blonde before the ground underneath his feet started to crumble. He widened his eyes and jumped back to avoid the slowly crumbling part. He looked down only to see utter darkness where he would have been if he had fallen. The trap. He wondered before he dodged fire shots coming from the sky. He backflipped away from those also and spun his staff over his head to block the blows, while people watched Higen acting crazy. The Jinjutsu right? The girl asked and Anko nodded. It's definitely not ninjutsu. Geez he's always gonna go this far, Anko said while people watched Higen go through his nightmare. What trickery is this? He asked before Naruto came up out of the ground. Higen turned to him while Naruto gave a simple smile. This is. My world and your nightmare, Naruto said as he vanished in a bunch of flower petals. Higen felt a jab across his face and a kick to his stomach, but he saw nothing there as he fell to his knees. He held his staff tightly before he closed his eyes. Calm down, there must be a logical explanation for this, Higen thought to himself before he saw he was wrapped in wires and explosion tags. Naruto appeared out of the ground and smiled as he had on in his hand. You wouldn't go this far would you? He asked and Naruto smiled as he slapped the sealed tag on Higen's face. Filling is allowed, Naruto said as he walked away holding up a single hand sign. Wait. I give up, surrender, forfeit. Which do you want? Higen asked and Naruto smiled. He sighed as he snapped his fingers. Ninjutsu? Success, Naruto said, and the man widened his eyes. He looked around as Mifune sighed. Higen Yashi you lose. Naruto Yuhi Uzumaki is the winner, Mifune yelled, and people cheered for the blonde. Naruto rubbed the back of his head while Mifune got to his feet. He picked up his staff and walked towards Naruto and held out his hand. I never thought it could be a Jinjutsu. As expected of you Naruto-san. Nice work, he said, and the blonde smiled with a nod. You too. That staff really hurts, Naruto said as they walked off making Higen chuckle. The man left and Naruto returned to his seat. Did you have fun? Anko asked and Naruto nodded with a small smile on his face. Well that's nice and all, but be sure to fight next time. I do want to see my little brother show off his skills, Anko said, and Naruto nodded that he would the next time. Meanwhile, Muramasa turned towards Hinata and Shikamaru. That young one is rather talented. To perfectly plan his attack and act accordingly. He's quite remarkable for his age, Muramasa said, and Shikamaru rolled his eyes. I don't think the words Naruto and plan go together, but he is a very talented and troublesome teammate. 
Only he would use Jinjutsu to win a fight where ninjutsu wasn't allowed, Shikamaru said while Hinata agreed. Muramasa gave an elderly laugh and nodded. However I want you all to pay close attention to who comes up next, he said ominously making Hinata and Shikamaru look at each other in a confused manner, while Mifune got to his feet again. Ayan Tengu vs Hiroshi Tsuchi, Mifune said, and immediately the hooded girl stood to her feet. Naruto watched her and narrowed his eyes. So her name was Ayan, huh? I hope you win so I can see you in the finals, Naruto told her as Ayan removed her hood. Just like Naruto thought, she was 13-year-old girl with light skin and violet-colored hair. She had a slender form and a dark purple, strapless dress with a pink butterfly printed on the skirt, complete with matching pull-on sleeves, stockings, heeled boots, and a medium-sized red or orange obipo tied around her waist. She was really something to look at Naruto figured. She had similar red eyes to his mother that completed the deadly look. Wow she's really something, Shikamaru said to himself, but Hinata agreed with what he was saying. Muramasa snickered while Ayan came down to the ground. She turned back to Naruto meeting the blonde's gaze. Her red eyes piercing at his blue before she turned around while she scratched her cheek. Very well, if you insist. Just don't be surprised when I win, she said as she went to the field. Immediately the man known as Hiroshi Tsuchi came to the platform and sighed. I get a child. Is this a joke? He asked while Ayan placed a hand on her hip while she gave a small air of annoyance on her face. Just keep thinking that, Ayan thought to herself while Mifune held out his hand. Begin, he yelled, and Ayan quickly took out the two Kadachi that she and Naruto had encountered together for the first time. She took a small glance at him, and the blonde was watching with a small on his face. Ayan turned her head back to see Hiroshi running at her. The purple-haired girl narrowed her eyes before jumping over him easily. Was that too fast for you? Then I'll slow it down for you, she said as she ran at him. Hiroshi threw a kunai at Ayan, but she easily parried it with her Kadachi and continued running. She got right into his face as Hiroshi met the reddest eyes he had ever seen. What are you? He asked before Ayan spun her body and kicked Hiroshi across the platform. Ayan dropped to the ground before she moved her hand behind her back and threw a kunai at Hiroshi, the man had only recovered enough to see it coming and parried the weapon before Ayan appeared behind him. She quickly tried to slash at him, but Hiroshi blocked her short sword, but it was a fluke as Ayan lowered her body and did a sweet kick underneath Hiroshi's feet. The man fell to the ground with a loud thud to the ground. Ayan quickly backed away from him while Naruto gasped. She's good. A lot better than I thought she was, Naruto said as he remained captivated by her skills. Anko chuckled at her little brother while Shikamaru and Hinata were in awe. Man, she's really good. She could really give Naruto a run for his money, Shikamaru said while Hinata activated her by Akigen. Her chakra is so relaxed and stable. It's not showing any aggression or anger at all. I wonder who she is, Hinata said while Muramasa watched Ayan fighting. Looks like Naruto-san did something to you Ayan. Normally you only fight to prove yourself, but now you're fighting to win and show up someone else. I wonder who that could be, Tuchi thought with a smile on his face, while Ayan brushed her hair. Are you done yet? I'd rather not kill you if I don't need to, she said impassively while Hiroshi got to his feet. He brushed his chin free of a bruise before he smiled. I'm not done yet girl. Screw winning. I just want to kill you right now. Hiroshi said as he went through his hand signs. Naruto widened his eyes while Ayan narrowed her one. Mifune glared while Hiroshi yelled. Oten. Doryuta no JUTSU Earth release. Earth dragon bombs, Hiroshi yelled as an earth dragon came and fired several shots at Ayan. The purple-haired girl quickly backflipped through all the shots before narrowing her eyes. You're pathetic, Ayan said as she threw a kunai at Hiroshi. He easily parried the shot, but he failed to see the second kunai she threw behind the first one. Hiroshi widened his eyes as the kunai was embedded in his chest. He fell to the ground in pain while Ayan started to leave the field. Where are you going? He asked in pain while Ayan turned to him with a glare. You broke the rules. You use ninjutsu and so you lose also to make certain you will be blasted away in three. 2. 1. Ayan finished and just as she did Hiroshi was sent flying by her kunai as he landed outside the ring. Winner Ayan Tengu, Mifune said, and Ayan quickly got off the field. She returned to her seat, closed her eyes and folded her arms. Nice match, someone said making Ayan open her eyes and turn them to see Naruto next to her. She noticed a small space between each other before she glared at him for a bit. How did he get so close to me and I didn't know it? Ayan thought to herself before she came back to Naruto's compliment. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Ayan said, and Naruto nodded. What was that kunai you used? He asked and Ayan pulled one out and handed it to him. Naruto gazed at the unique design of the kunai. It's similar to your explosion kunai only I call them incendiary kunai. They serve the same purpose I suppose, she said, and Naruto nodded. And that's cool that you know so much. 
Even though you held back in the fight you seemed like you were enjoying yourself, Naruto told her, and Ayan settled for keeping her eyes closed. You're too close, she said, and the blonde apologized before backing up slightly. Sorry about that so where did you train? You've got some awesome moves, Naruto told her, and Ayan looked at the stadium she was watching two other people fight it out before going over Naruto's question. I normally wouldn't say, but I guess I'll tell you. I trained in the Mugen Tenshin Ninjutsu or more precisely the Hajinmon style. Is that it for your questions? She asked and Naruto smiled with a nod as he got to his feet. Yes yeah, sorry to have bothered you, Naruto told her before Ayan opened her eyes. She watched him leave before saying something. So what about you? Where and what do you train in? Ayan asked and Naruto turned around. I train in Kanahagakur no Sado. As to what I train in, it's the Jinjutsu arts and Hibi style to Jutsu, Naruto said walking off while Ayan closed her eyes. Well he's interesting just like Muramasa Sen said he was, Ayan thought before she decided to think about something else. But Naruto. Naruto sat back down next to Anko, and the Jonin smiled at him. Naruto wondered what she was so happy about before Anko nudged his shoulder. So did you have a good talk? She asked while Naruto rolled his eyes at her. What are you talking about? It was just a talk about how she fights, Naruto said, and Anko simply nodded with a small smile on her face. Sure you were. Well it's my turn so watch me fight, Anko told him, and Naruto nodded. Anko's fight was rather. Short. She mopped the floor with the guy she fought, and she quickly pushed him out of the ring easily. It was like nothing Naruto had ever seen or rather something that no one should have seen. It was really embarrassing for the man. Anko ni don't you think that was rather fast? Naruto asked and Anko waved him off. I don't have the time to waste on these small people. I'll fight seriously in the later parts of the tournament. Just know that if I face you then it's going to be a good little fight, Anko said licking her lips, while Naruto sweat dropped. That's not good for me at all, Naruto thought with a small gulp on his face. The rest of the tournament was rather nice, and some not so nice. People were disqualified for either cheating or breaking the rooms. Quite a few people made it past the first day there were a few long fights that made Naruto wonder how anyone had such stamina, before Anko pointed to him making Naruto sigh with a small nod. There were so many people that the event lead into the night. It was near midnight, and the last two people fought before they finally had a winner. Out of the 112 people who entered only 56 people still remained throughout the tournament, Mifune stood to his feet and raised his hand. That was a good first day everyone. Competitors are to return to their places of rest, and we will continue tomorrow afternoon. Get some rest and prepare for the next day, Mifune said, and people sighed as they all got to their feet and began to file out. But, he continued stopping everyone from leaving. Know that tomorrow's part will be different from today's dot you will all know of the term endurance. Rest well, Mifune said as he left the room. Everyone murmured amongst themselves about what he could mean by that. Ayan quickly wrapped herself in her cloak and walked out of the dome, while Naruto and Anko met up with the rest of his team. So how do you think we did? Naruto asked while Hinata and Shikamaru smiled. I think you did good till you got slapped around by that staff, but then you used Jinjutsu to win. Sneaky trick, Shikamaru told him, and Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Anko-sensei, you're just plain scary with what you did to that one guy. I didn't know anyone could bend like that, Hinata said as remembering the act while Anko chuckled as she scratched her cheek. Did I really go that far? Anko asked while Naruto sweat dropped. Most of the people left out of fear of you, Naruto told her, and Anko chuckled as she rubbed the back of her head before the others saw Muramasa arrive. So I take it you had fun boy? He asked and Naruto nodded with a small smile on his face. I sure did. I can't wait for tomorrow. Even if it is late, Naruto said yawning and soon after him was Shikamaru and Hinata. Everyone was tired from watching and Anko sighed. Alright team, let's go back to the hotel immediately. We'll go to bed and get ready for tomorrow, Anko told them, and everyone agreed with her as they walked off, but Muramasa pulled Naruto back. What's the matter Muramasa Oji? Naruto asked and the man chuckled as he leaned against the wall. She's a little mysterious one isn't she? He asked while Naruto raised an eyebrow. He wondered who he could be talking about as the blonde had seen many women competing. Which are you talking about? Naruto asked and Muramasa chuckled at the blonde before patting him on the shoulder. You really don't know kid. Man you're so innocent at times that it's funny. I'm talking about the one that you are interested in, Muramasa said, and Naruto was brought back to the purple-haired girl that also fought in the tournament. You know her? Naruto asked, and Muramasa nodded with a small smile on his face, as he had piqued the blonde's interest. Yes, quite well in fact. Tell me something young one, has it been a long time since you felt the rush of the fight? Muramasa asked and Naruto raised an eyebrow again. He thought that over before he sighed. Honestly yes. I have training sessions with my team, but it's not the same. It feels good to fight other people and have fun. 
The last time I felt like this was when I went on that C rank mission against Kyoko chan, Naruto said to himself and Muramasa nodded. I see, well that's nice to hear. Young people should have their fun. It's been a long time since I've seen Ayan want to win so badly at something, the old blacksmith said, and Naruto turned to him. What do you mean? He asked and the man sighed. It's not for me to say. Just that I will tell you this. When and I repeat, when you two fight she will not hold back, and neither should you. He I'll be surprised if either of you go through this fight without without using ninjutsu at all, Muramasa said to him and Naruto nodded. I see, but what did you mean by did I feel the rush of the fights? Naruto asked and Muramasa pulled out a small cane. Naruto looked at the cane before Muramasa swung at the blonde. Naruto quickly dodged it as he jumped in the air. He quickly took out one of his swords and took a genin stance. Muramasa chuckled and sheathed his sword while the sound of a bell echoed. Naruto narrowed his eyes while Muramasa walked up to him and lightly punched him in the stomach. Did your heart race? He asked and Naruto sheathed his sword. Did it? It hasn't stopped racing, Naruto told him, and Muramasa nodded. You'll feel just like that when you fight her. Oh and she's single just to let you know, Muramasa said with a perverted giggle, while Naruto lightly blushed. Hey I'm alright engaged so why are you telling me that? The blonde asked and Muramasa waved him off leaving the blonde gasping. It was my understanding that you shinobi always practiced polygamy, so what are you complaining about? Muramasa asked while Naruto dropped his jaw while Muramasa easily left. Hey Naruto, are you alright man? Shikamaru asked and Naruto turned to the future Nara head. Let's just go to sleep. Too many weird things have happened today, Naruto told him as he walked away while Shikamaru followed him out. Back in Konoha. So do you three think you can handle it? Saratobi asked Kyoko, Mikoto and Hiyashi about their mission. They all nodded while Kyoko grinned. I finally get a mission. This is getting good, she said while Saratobi smiled. Mikoto and Hiyashi sweat dropped at her, but they didn't mind that. So you believe that one of Arachimaru's men is moving and you want us to tail him? Is that right? Mikoto asked and Saratobi nodded. Understood Hokage-sama, we'll get this done immediately, Mikoto and Hiyashi said as they left, while Kyoko turned to Saratobi. What makes you think he'll target the up-and-coming Chunin exams? Kyoko asked and Saratobi puffed his pipe for a bit. Because he'll do anything to get back at Konoha, and the place where tons of shinobi gather in one village will be too much temptation for him not to try. Besides that I just have a feeling that he will, Saratobi said, and Kyoko nodded. You better not do anything stupid like risking your life or dying after you fight him. Besides I have a score to settle with his ass myself, Kyoko said, and Saratobi chuckled at her. Leave it to Kyoko to know everyone that she came across. What did he do to you? Saratobi asked and Kyoko looked at the ground. I'd rather not talk about it. Well I'll get going old man, Kyoko said as she quickly left the room, while Saratobi sighed in his chair. There was so much that he didn't know about Kyoko, and yet he could tell that she was the loyal type. At least to those who weren't power hungry. He really had to have a calming talk with her one of these days. It was then that the door opened and Saratobi looked up. He sighed as he rubbed his head at who it was. So I guess traveling has gotten boring for you to come back this early. Saratobi asked and a white-haired man rubbed the back of his head. Yeah I missed the place a little bit. By the way who was that blue-haired cutie that just left? She was freaking hot, the man said while Saratobi sighed. That was Kyoko Fura, and she was an A-rank missing nin. So what were you step Jiraiya, the old Hokage said to the man and Jiraiya sighed. For the sake of research no risk is too great, Jiraiya said flexing his hands in a weird way, while Saratobi shook his head. Well that's not the only reason I'm back anyway. So tell me how is the brat doing? Jiraiya asked and Saratobi grinned like mad at the question. Brat. What brat are you talking about? He asked while Jiraiya slammed the table. Don't give me that Saratobi sensei. How is Naruto? Is he alright? Jiraiya asked and Saratobi massaged his beard while he turned around. Naruto-kun? Oh, he's fine. Better than fine actually. He making quite a name for himself as a genin, Hiruzen said, and Jiraiya folded his arms. Right, well can I see him? Jiraiya asked, but Saratobi only shrugged his shoulders before the old Hokage went back to signing papers and documents as usual. Well you'll have to take it up with his mother, Saratobi said, and Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. As far as he knew Naruto's mother was gone, so he wondered what Saratobi could mean by that. What do you mean by his mother? Jiraiya asked and Saratobi snickered. Do you know what people call Naruto-kun? Saratobi asked and Jiraiya shook his head. The sand aim snickered at Jiraiya's cluelessness, making the sand an even more irate. What do they call him? Is it something bad or what? He asked and Saratobi calmed down. Once you hear this name then you will know who his mother is, Saratobi said, and Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. Naruto-kun due to his gaze at people has recently been called the Ice Fox of Konoha, Saratobi said, and Jiraiya narrowed his eyes. 
Ice Fox of Kanoha. No one has a name like that except for, Jiraiya widened his eyes, and he gulped. Saratobi watched him squirm as the Sanin fell to the floor. The Ice Queen of Kanoha. Kurinayuhi. She adopted Naruto. Jiraiya asked and Saratobi nodded making the white-haired man gulp. But she hates everything I stand for. I'll never get to see him. How did she adopt him? Jiraiya asked and Saratobi suggested that Jiraiya pull up a seat. The Sanin did so and Saratobi sighed. It all started when. Back in the Land of Iron, Stadium, Afternoon. Naruto sat with Anko again as they watched people fight, but they were more interested in something else. It wasn't the people fighting, rather it was what they were fighting on. Everyone who had come to this tournament knew about Chakra and knew how to use it, well a lot more than a few did anyway. The platform was remodeled to shift positions every 15 minutes. Going from flat down to diagonal, upside down, diagonal, and then upside down again. It was some kind of jutsu that no one knew, but they weren't complaining at all, especially the shinobi who had experience in fighting in strange ways. Naruto could see the two fighting and saw how it was hard to keep Chakra added to the feet while moving to fight at the same time. Mifune was a real genius to come up with something like this. They seemed to be struggling, Naruto said, while Anko had snickered at the fight. It was probably the most amusing thing she had ever since in such a long time. No kidding. If they don't give out from the fight then they exhaust Chakra. It's a real speed battle, Anko said while Naruto turned his head. What do you think? He asked Ayan who was sitting a few feet behind him. The purple-haired girl sighed while she leaned her head on one arm. Definitely exhausting for those who don't have experience. Try not to lose when it's your turn, she said with her eyes closed. Naruto sort of felt the cold attitude, but being around his mother a lot and Samui he could deal with it. Same goes to you. Cause when I get into the finals I'm not going to hold back on you, Naruto told her, and Ayan turned to glare to him. Naruto glared back and anyone in between them could feel the cold atmosphere. Ayan tore her gaze from Naruto and looked back at the stadium. What make you think that you'll be in the finals or that even I will? She asked while Naruto looked back at the stadium. He watched the two warriors fight it out before turning back to the purple-haired Kinoichi. Because you love the rush of a good fight just like I do and you know that you can get that with me, and I can get that with you, Naruto told her making Ayan mentally chuckle even if she didn't want to. Just focus on getting there first, she said, and Naruto looked back at the field. Same goes to you, he told her as they looked at the field, but the tension between them had risen as they each had one thought. I'm going to him or her down. If I lose to him or her then I'll regret it for the rest of my life. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do please leave a like share and subscribe also don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then see you in next video.